So, see that guy? You know, on the outside, he probably looks like some average guy, right? You know, the type of kid. When you walk by every single day without batting an eye, kind of just a face in the crowd. You don't talk to him, he doesn't talk to you. He's kind of just there. Well, you want to hear a little spoiler? I am infinitely worse. I, uh, I don't really know how to do these kind of things. I mean, how do you just talk about yourself? Well, most people call me Rex. And I'd like to think I'm a good person. I mean, I don't go out of my way putting out fires or try to rescue kittens that are stuck in trees, but I always do what I'm supposed to do. I got good grades in school, I work hard, and I never really try to cause any trouble. That's probably because I just keep to myself, but what, what's wrong with that? Doing more than just surviving takes energy and opportunity. And I don't really have a whole lot of that on a good day. Most of my days are pretty much the same routine. It's not a bad routine. It's just the cards have been dealt, you know? When I'm not out of the house, I'm on my computer, playing games and streaming to an online audience. That's probably the most entertaining part of my day. I think that's gonna wrap up streams. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow night. Thanks so much for tuning in. Night, guys. But even that comes to an end eventually. Uh, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't say my life sucks or anything like that. I wouldn't call it the best one out there. It's just kind of normal. I wake up, work, eat, stream, and sleep. I'm not the kind of guy that the story's about, and that's okay. But even so, I do still wish for more. Just sometimes. Like, I did have some greater purpose or something, but I don't know. I just wish something cool could happen. What? What? Okay, okay! What is happening right now? Hello? This is crazy! What do I do? What, what is happening? I'm falling out of the sky! I can barely even hear myself! Okay, okay, relax. It's just it's just a dream. Like like a lucid dream or something. Alright, I could just focus on the ground. Put me on a, on a spaceship! Or actually, my room would probably be good enough. Yeah! Okay, not a lucid dream! What kind of dream is this? <sighs> Alright, just, just one thing at a time. Let's just focus on, like, landing or something. I, I, I remember watching videos on what to do in these kind of situations. Okay, if I see a mountain, then I could try and land on a slope. Yeah, 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 yeah. that way I can slide down the side and the slope can help me not plummet vertically. But what if there are rocks? Sharp rocks. Okay, scrap the mountain. Let's hope for a uh, 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 a forest. Yeah, if I fall, I could just aim for a tree. And the bushy leaves and the branches will help slow my momentum till I land on the floor. Not that either. Okay, you know what? No, I'm just gonna. I'm being overly paranoid. I can make this work. Yeah, yeah. Once I see what I'm falling on, I can come up with a plan. Then, just as long as it's not water. Hitting water at this speed is like certain doom. Okay, Rex, focus up. Let's see what we're working with.
You slowly feel your consciousness rouse as a heavy fog settles on your mind. You can't fully recall what just happened immediately, but you remember the feeling of falling and then drowning? Not much. Sleep. Your ears ring mildly as all sense of sight, hearing, taste, and feeling return to your body. You feel something soft under you. A bed. You must be back in your apartment then. <sighs> Finally. Have to figure out worth like this. Think he's up? The voices slowly start to get louder and louder, sounding from your right. You stir in your sleep, a headache stabbing inside of your skull. What? Look, he's starting to wake up, see? He's even muttering now. The voice. It's so strange. Is that a girl's voice? Why is there a woman in your room? It's never happened before. Five more minutes. Good work, Alice. A different woman's voice sounds. He's beginning to think he'd stay asleep. Two? A third and more commanding voice barks. You too, quiet. He's almost awake. Three women? What, there must be some mistake here. Or are you still dreaming? Wh what's going on? Okay, what? You quickly sit up, blinking the blurriness out of your vision and taking in your surroundings. The sound of waves begin to echo through your ears, and the smell of salt water fills your nostrils. You glance around at the wooden room you find yourself in. It's some kind of prison cell? You feel your entire body swaying from side to side, as if you were on a ship. Wait a second, is this a ship? Uh. Rise and shine, punk! The commanding voice chuckles at you. You turn your head towards the voice. Your eyes adjust as three figures come into focus from beyond the cell bars. The woman who just spoke at you with a cocksure grin and has her arms folded across her chest. She has light green hair and a rather jarring lack of a shirt. Huh? Another woman pipes up, speaking to the first. She had of dark hair, borderline black, and a red coat over her shoulders. He looks pretty disoriented. Should I go get Constance? Nah, he's fine. The first woman speaks again, waving dismissively. He has to be. I mean, there's no other way to explain how he's still here right now. Hi, yeah, sorry, um, <laughs> what's going on here? Why don't you tell me? She leans forward, arms still crossed. Our lookout saw you fall from the sky. First, we thought she must have been seeing things. People don't just crash down from the heavens randomly. But then, we did a little more looking. We found you sprawled out on the ocean floor. We were stuck wondering just where the heck you came from, and how the heck you weren't a puddle. She shrugs. <laughs> Of course, he must have swallowed a lot of water on the way down, because uh, he's been out for about a week. Though, I mean, wow, this is a crazy dream. Uh, what? The green-haired woman looks at you in confusion before glancing at her two other compatriots, who return her gaze equally befuddled. <laughs> Jeez, the salt water get in his brain or something? Who are you? Who are you people supposed to be? The green-haired woman huffs haughtily, tossing her hair over her shoulder to stand before you with unparalleled confidence. You will address me as Captain Wren, leader of the Sirens and terror of the Meridian Sea. My name strikes fear in the hearts of many, and it commands respect. Consider yourself honored to stand before me. There's a long pause. Looks like she's waiting for you to say something. Okay. The third girl, who would have dark brown hair with faded orange at the tips, would give a small sticker, much to Ren's irritation. She shoots a look back at her before glaring at you, putting on a cruel grin and grabbing the bars to gaze into your eyes. Of course, I should be the one asking the questions here. Tell me something. Just who are you supposed to be? I'm... Rex. Yeah, yeah, uh... Call me Rex. Rex. She pauses for a moment, blinking at you. Wait, that's it? J j just Rex? 
Um. Yeah? She tries to compose herself, leaning back and frowning, looking you up and down as if she's trying to obtain a better answer from just looking at you. All right, Rex. Where did you come from? And how the heck did you manage to survive that fall? I, uh... Don't know. Huh? I'm serious, I, I really don't know. Ren would seem utterly disappointed in your answers. The woman with orange-tipped hair would step up to Ren's side, speaking. He might have amnesia, you know? I mean, he has been out for, like, a week. Amnesia. So, you think he lost his memories? Ren considers this. Hmm. Guess that would explain that dumb, vacant look on his face. What the f- Hey! You think the rest of them are like this too, Ren? The black-haired woman inquires. No idea. Huh? Wait, 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 rest of them? You really are clueless, aren't you? Ren looks at you with intrigue glittering in her eyes. Listen up, Rex, because I'm not going to repeat myself. Got that? Word has it that you're not the only person who fell out of the sky. Apparently people like you have been falling all across the world of Rem. More people like me? Wait, hang on, isn't your name Ren? Uh, yeah? She blinks at you. <laughs> kind of egotistical, don't you think? What? She starts to stammer, appearing rather baffled before rapidly becoming enraged. But not the world of Ren! The world of Rem, you moron! Oh, uh, um, whoops. The woman with orange hair at Ren's side begins to snicker. <laughs> world of Ren. <laughs> That's pretty good. Alice, watch it. And the other woman chides. I, 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 I mean, you can't, you can't blame me for being confused on that, right? Quiet, punk! Ren glares at you, her eye twitching. She leans on the bars again. You're lucky I'm not throwing you off this ship! Under normal circumstances, you'd be sinking back down to the bottom of the sea for that one. But right now, you're a little too valuable of cargo. Wait, what? Ren begins to smirk. <laughs> oh yeah, that got your attention, didn't it? <laughs> See, the entire world is buzzing with news about these special people who fell from the sky. They're quite the rare commodity, you know. So, while well, you were asleep, I made a deal with a certain buyer to get something I've been eyeing for a long time. Okay, what does that mean? It's simple, really. It means I'm going to sell you, Rex. Huh? But you can't do that, you- I didn't think- I don't think you realize the position you're in, punk. You don't exactly have a say in the matter. Ren grins as she opens her arms wide. After all, finders keepers, am I right? Age-old laws of the sea. I've found you, so you're my property. Nothing but merchandise to be sold off to the highest bidder. Alice rolls her eyes at Ren's words, while the other woman seems indifferent to what's happening. Seriously? That... that sucks. Ren laughs at your response. <laughs> what did you expect? I'm a pirate, after all. And pirates do whatever they want, taking whatever they want. You're no exception. You're going to help me get rich and quick. All you need to do in the meantime is sit there and be a good little prisoner. <laughs> it's not like you have many other options. Ren turns to one of the women at her side. Rose, we're done here. Let's go make sure all the arrangements are in place for the trade-off in a few days. Of course, Captain. Ren and the woman named Rose exit the hallway outside of your cell, leaving you alone with Alice. She stands there silently, seemingly measuring you up for a few moments before sighing. <sighs> Marinating in seawater definitely destroyed your weird-looking clothes. Here, try squeezing into something more comfortable. Thanks. The woman tosses a loosely folded outfit through the bars before turning and walking off as well. You're left alone in the brig of a ship, with nothing to do except get up and get changed. Might as well. That, I think. Wait, is that where that string goes? How do I tie this off? Alright, you know what, that's good enough. After pulling on and tying the knots on your boots, you approach the mirror and look into it for the first time. 
first, the reflection shows just about what you expected. You see yourself as you always have. A bit tired, shaggy, and just a touch charming. It's just you. However, the sight is fleeting, as it is suddenly replaced with a new form. It's a face that you recognize, and one that you see yourself in, but in a completely different manner than you could have ever expected. At first, you think it's a trick of your mind. You close your eyes and open them a few times, but you're face to face with a new version of yourself. A version you couldn't have even dreamed of before. Wow. You marvel as you watch your mouth move to form the word, and yet it is a remarkable sight to behold. The image seems comfortable, and yet foreign all at the same time. As if you lived with this visage your whole life, could only see it properly at this moment. Your features are the same, but there are so many small traits that are different. Your eyes feel like empty voids. You find yourself transfixed by those inverted silver eyes, a world of thoughts and emotions littered inside of them like stars dotted in the night sky. You lift a hand and touch a tip of the gray protrusions on your head. Are those horns? They feel sharp, and they stand proudly atop your head like a crown. As if some aspect of yourself was deserving of a regal title. Behind your lips lie two rows of serrated teeth, each following the outline of your jaw. The subtle fangs look dangerous, and yet feel perfectly normal within the confines of your mouth. You push your pointer fingers into the corners of your mouth and craft a smile on your face. And the shape your mouth takes is oddly pleasant. You rest a hand on your chest and feel your heart beat. It's your heart, and it pounds away just as passionately as it always has. There's a particular comfort in recognizing your own heartbeat in your chest. It seems that despite your unique appearance, you are still you. You turn away from the mirror. This must be some sort of dream, though if it is one, it is certainly the most vivid and detailed dream you've ever had. Well, that's the case. Doesn't seem like any alarms waking you up quite yet. Might as well look around and enjoy the experience. <laughs> Let's see what's in here. I have my very own little room. And look, it's got hanging lanterns. Wait. Am I schizophrenic? No, chat, is that you? I can hear you. I hear you in my head right now. Am I streaming? How am I streaming? I'm streaming in a dream. Oh, that's crazy. Hi, guys. Hello. How are we all doing? Hi. Holy crap, my dreams are optimistic. How many subs did you gift me? What the hell? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh my god. Yo, the day I've had, the past few days I've had, I'm gonna cry. I was about to cry before the stream starts. I might actually cry now. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus Christ. Well, thank you, Queen, for like the 56 subs. And Grand, thank you for the for the six subs. And Ovec, thank you for the hydrate. Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> Tori ascended! Can a mod handle that, or can I only ascend? No, I bet I only can do it. Alright, hold on. <laughs> Congratulations, Tori. You've earned your, your, your food, your meal. Thank you guys so much. You're so kind. Dan, thank you for the hydrate. All right, there we go. Tori ate their greens, you bet. Cam, thank you for the 10 bits. 
Oh my, oh me, oh my. Well, if you guys aren't real, it's nice to know I'm not going through this alone. That at least I've got some casual commentators. And your thoughts aren't even overbearing. They're just like casual ideas just streaming through my conscious. It's kind of comforting. Huh. Well, chat. Welcome to, um, my dream. God, this is so... Why would I... <laughs> I can't believe I've dreamed of my own chat in my own dream. <laughs> <laughs> we are real, though? Yeah, of course you would say that, all right? If you're in a dream... <laughs> like, what? Come on. <laughs> it's kind of the point of a dream, huh? <laughs> Hello? Did they give you a pillow on that bed? We could go check it out. Dang, are you guys giving me advice? This is an interesting concept that we've just stumbled upon. Wow. Well, um... Dream chat. I hope you've had a great day today. If you've even had days, because you're just dream people. So, what's up? How we doing? <laughs> <laughs> can't believe he's making money in his dreams. Dream money! <laughs> well, that's how that goes, I guess. Hmm. There's kind of a lot of junk in here. Is that a bucket? That's a bucket! What the hell? You approach the bucket. It's formidable in appearance. Evidently, this bucket was placed here by the pirates for you to do your, uh, business. Fortunately for both you and them, you don't feel the need to right now. <laughs> you kick the bucket, causing it to fall into its side with a resounding clang. You monster. Alright. There's so much junk. Why is there just junk in a, like a, a prison room? Hold on, someone mentioned checking out my bed. It's the bed you've been sleeping in for the past week, apparently. Now that you've taken a good look at it, it needs to be damp from your old soap clothes. Based on the mess it has left in, you're likely the only person to sleep in it for the past... three years? Is that a bug crawling around in there? Yikes. You decide it's probably best to stay out of bed for once. You're not in the mood to catch a disease today. Maybe tomorrow. Huh. <laughs> Z-listing, thank you for the gifted sub. <laughs> there are just so, so many of you. Holy crap. <laughs> hmm. There's a spot of green right here. What is this? That's not it. What is this? There's a patch of moss growing new on the floor of your cell. It seems like this room doesn't see much use. At least not enough to justify proper cleaning. There's something stuck inside the mound of moss, but you can't quite tell what it is. Probably just trash anyway. What? Why? No! Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, alright. <laughs> you know what? No. <laughs> that, that's fair. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> okay. Alright, maybe the rational part of my mind isn't completely gone in a dream then. Alright, fine. <laughs> Man, what? Th there's not a whole lot in here, is there? Huh? Maybe we can screw around with the bucket some more? Bucket's on its side. Look at what you've done. Okay, yeah, yeah, actually, you know what? Now, now I actually feel- It's just a bucket! Now I feel bad! Come on! Hello? <laughs> well, dang! Okay. Okay, I- I- this, Okay, I thought this was a visual bug. This is not a visual bug. This is just a, a entire crack in the floor. It seems like the floorboards are a bit loose here. There's just a somewhat large gap in between a couple of planks, but it's too small for your hands to fit through. Might be something stuck in the floor, but so dark you can't tell. <sighs> Come on, you an entire ship and you can't patch up one little spot of floor? Come on. 
<laughs> That's so saddening. Oh. Rex is the type of person to look at boss and ask, is anyone going to finish that and then not wait for an answer? <laughs> 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 That's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> Did you come up with that on your own? Because <laughs> if so, that's really good. Hmm. Look through boxes? Yeah, sure. Let's try that. There's an assortment of crates on the floor. All that they seem to contain are cobwebs, dust, and a terrifying colony of mushrooms growing on an old loaf of bread. There is one crate, however, that you can't open. It has a combination lock pressed, sealing it shut, and you're certain that you don't have the time or patience to try and guess the number combination. Wait, it's not 420? Oh, man. I'm not sure that was it. Hmm. Hmm. I'm stumped. Hold on, where am I? Oh, wow. And you gaze out the water-damaged bars that form your window. You're face to face with the boundless ocean. You strain your eyes as you look into the distance, but all you can see is the expansive skyline. An endless journey, and once that distant horizon. I wonder if I'll ever reach it. Wow. That's just... I've never seen so much water in, like, my whole life. If I just reach out, maybe... No. Uh. uh. Um? You approach the bars of yourself after noticing the girl silently watching you. How long has she been there? As you approach and stare at one another, you can't help but notice her body slightly shift back, almost as though she were mildly intimidated by you. Ah, uh, hello? You don't recognize this girl from before. And you greet her. Her eyes seem to struggle with what to focus on, eventually resting back on your face and giving you a hesitant smile. It's pleasant and warm, but she still seems a bit apprehensive. You certainly seem content in there, don't you? Well, I mean, yeah, it doesn't feel too different from being locked in my own room all day. Except now I have my very own bucket! And try to return the girl's smile, and she giggles a little bit at your words. Her body language slightly relaxes at your humor. <laughs> she looks back up at you, fiddling with her dress nervously. Um, I'm glad to see that you're okay. You were asleep for a pretty long time, and some of us thought you weren't going to wake up. I mean, not that we thought you were dead. You were breathing the entire time. We just, uh... Nah, I get it. I mean, guys don't just fall out of nowhere into the ocean and then live to talk about it. Yeah, that's it. She opens up to you more. Are you feeling all right? I overheard that Ren already talked to you earlier when you woke up. I mean, I feel fine. It's kind of weird. Weird in a good way, or weird in a bad way? Just weird. You'd think falling from the sky would give you back pain or something. Once more, she laughs at your statement. Slowly but surely, she seems to be opening up to you. Is she just shy, perhaps? <laughs> You're kind of funny, you know. Definitely not what I expected for my first time down here. Is that a good thing? or oh sorry yes i mean I, I just uh she pauses as she considers her next words i'm not really sure what else i was expecting i guess we've been out at sea for a while so it's kind of been a while since i've talked to a boy oh wait is your entire crew full of chicks well <laughs> yeah the girl shrugs it's an all-girl pirate crew ren's trying to make a statement or something I don't really know, honestly. She laughs a bit awkwardly, but shakes it off. But it's not just that, either. I guess I also thought you'd be a little more... mean or something. But you seem okay. 
Wait, wait, what? Mean? Why would it be mean? It can't be easy to be a prisoner. I thought you'd be more resentful. Plus, I'm normally pretty intimidated by dread, so even if you weren't really mean, I thought you would be in... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of rambling now, aren't I? Dread? What's that? The girl blinks. You... you... Don't know what a dread is? How is that possible? I have amnesia or something. Oh, I guess that makes sense. You wouldn't really come out of a fall like that unscathed, huh? <laughs> That's all right. I can try and explain it as best as I can. She clears her throat. <clears> throat> Dreads are a race and rem that come from the kingdom of Dramos. Uh, they're usually pretty easy to spot in a crowd because all dreads have a set of horn on their heads. Uh-huh. Okay. When we fished you out of the ocean, we knew right away that you were dread because of your horns. See? She points to the protrusions atop your head. It's surprising that amnesia can be so bad that you even forget your own identity. <laughs> yeah, you don't say. Suddenly the girl pauses, putting a hand over her mouth in embarrassment. I'm sorry, I just started talking rambling to you, and I never told you that my name! I I I'm Carrie. It's nice to meet you, uh... Oh, uh, you can call me Rex. <laughs> Alright then, Rex. It's my pleasure. Her smile becomes more of a beam. She seems far more comfortable in your presence now. So, uh, Carrie, you know where we are right now? Oh, yeah, you probably have a load of questions, huh? Carrie motions around her to the entire ship. This is the ship of the Sirens. Uh, we're a crew of pirates led by Captain Wren. Uh, we mostly travel around the Meridian Sea looking for treasure and adventure. <laughs> Sounds like a fun life, but your captain isn't exactly the nicest. <laughs> Wren can definitely be intimidating sometimes, but don't worry too much. She's not so bad. Plus, our crew probably isn't as cool as you think we are. Uh, what do you mean? We don't really have prisoners often, so when we do, Ren likes to talk up the sirens as much as she can. She shrugs her shoulders. Do with that information what you will. Right. So what about you? Me? Oh, I'm... I'm no one special, really. I'm just here to do my part and help out how I can. I haven't really been on the ship for too long myself. Just a couple of months of pirate experience for me. <laughs> she pauses. Hang on, I almost totally forgot! Forgot what? The entire reason I came down here was to give you some food. You're probably really pretty hungry after spending all that time in a coma. Uh, let's see. She walks into the hallway on the right for a moment before returning with a tray in her hands, which she slips under the bar for you. It's not much, but it's something. There's a little bit of stew, some bread, hopefully it's not too stale. Oh, and uh, here's a drink for you, too! Although... Hmm? Carrie holds the cup up in her hands and sniffs it for a moment before looking up at you. Rum, huh? You're an adult, right? What, what do you think? I'm a grown man! I was just checking. <laughs> okay, well, between the two of us, you look more like the child. All right, all right, I get your point. Here. She starts to pass you the cup of rum. Actually, do you have any water? Oh, yeah, I can get you some water instead. Once again, Carrie walks out of sight into the hallway, returning with a cup of water moments later to hand to you. Now that the food delivery part's done, I should probably get going. But you're not too bad, Rex. She beams. I'll try to visit later to pick up your tray and get you dinner, okay? Just sit tight until then. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, Carrie. Huh. She was nice. Oh, is there over 100 of you? What the hell, dude? Seriously? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I peaked at 108? Oh my god. <laughs> it's not scream as one. We will blow his ear to you. Yeah, please have mercy. <laughs> Thank you guys.
You're so nice. You dream people. <laughs> See what happens when you leave us alone? Yeah, apparently I also get hydrates. Let me do that real quick. <laughs> Call us Dream Chat. That's a pretty cute name. <laughs> Not in a dream. Hey man, I'm real. Alright, you guys are freaking me out. Alright. Dream Chat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put our heads together, all right? What? No. Is there something we can goof off with? Is this like a little seat? It's like a little chair. Oh, I'm sitting. Look at me. Oh, it's Z listing. Thank you for the 100 bits. You're so generous. Get some lanterns. Great. You know what? I want to check out that view again. Gorgeous. You can't help but wander over to the window once more, looking out towards the ever-expansive horizon. You gaze off at the clouds high above, faded stars still visible in the blue as the sun begins its slow descent through the sky. Ocean foam mists over your face. Everything feels so real in this dream that it takes you by surprise. Hmm. I wonder how long I'll be here till my alarm goes off. Captivated by your thoughts, you drift off. This dream's so vivid. Even the people you've met in it seem to have their own personalities and stories. Your brain got fairly creative with making this entire story for you to experience. A and your appearance. The girl said you were a dread. But you managed to create an entire race too? <laughs> You're almost impressed. The ocean would continue to rock the boat and spray salt water at you from your spot behind the bars. There's silence, except for the hypnotic crashing of waves. Suddenly your vision is overtaken by white as a piece of paper flies in front of your face on the sea breeze. Ah! You stumble away from the window in surprise, ripping the paper off your face. There's some messy ink scribbling words across the parchment. The ink doesn't entirely look dry yet. Additionally, a long strand of seaweed would loosely wrap around the paper, a small and rusted key secured in its fibers. What the... The letter reads as follows. You can't stay here, Rex. You're needed outside this cell. Brain? Is that you? Naturally, you don't receive a response. You stand up and look out the window once more, your eyes darting left and right to try and find the origin of this letter. But there'd be nobody around, obviously. You're out at sea, in the middle of nowhere. It, 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 is, is this my brain trying to help me progress or something? I get it. It's like a little, it's like a little, uh, fetch quest. It's like a little errand. Right? Because we're having a dream. So we get to do whatever we want. So, we just gotta progress. We gotta go. We've gotta... You know what? I If I could do whatever I want, I want to be a pirate captain. That's me. That's what I want to do. I'm going to take over this ship, and I'm going to sail it wherever I want. Like, anywhere. I could bring it right to... My apartment. I gotta set my sights higher. Alright, let's get out of here. It's the door to your cell. The rest of the ship is on the other side of it. All you need to do is open it up and... It's still locked. Don't know what else you expected. <laughs> Good thing I got this key. The key you found with the letter doesn't fit into the cell door. Your key is far too small for the door lock. Looks like you'll have to keep searching. Alright then. Guess it never it really is never that easy. <laughs> Why give me a key, but not give me the key to the door, brain? Come on. <sighs> what am I supposed to use a key on now? It's a key. Goes into a lock. I'm stumped. Because that's my number one lock idea right there. 
but it's failed me. The hole in the ground, crate, 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 crate. No, not crate. Mirror? You approach the dusty mirror and gaze into the reflective glass. It's still you, or at least the version of you in this REM world. You find yourself entranced in your silver eyes for another moment before you shake your head. Focus, Rex. Try eating the moss again? <gasps> good shout, good shout, good shout. Maybe it's the moss. Is it the moss? That's not the moss. That's the moss. The patch of moss continues to thrive on the floor of the cell. There's something stuck inside the mound of moss, but you can't quite tell what it is. You try to stick your hand into the moss to fish out the object, but moss is far too thick for your hands to pull apart. Ah, moss is redundant. Hmm. Bed? Now's not the time for a nap. You have to get out of the cell, remember? I can sleep when I wake up. Or, wait, hang on. Maybe it's Bucket. It's not Bucket. It's still on its side. I still feel bad. Come on! Hole, right, someone said hole, someone said hole. There's a somewhat large gap in between a couple of planks, but it's too small for your hands to fit through. Might be something stuck in the floor, but it's so dark you can't tell. You lean down and squint into the darkness. You swear that in the sunlight there's something glinting in the pitch darkness. No. No keyhole in the hole. Hmm. Ooh! You cannot open this crate. It has a combination lock sealing it shut. You're certain that you don't have the time or patience to try to guess the number combination. Nah, but I got a key! This lock doesn't even have a keyhole. What did you expect? Well, I, I don't know, man! I have a key! What am I supposed to use it on? Come on! Lantern? Do you want the key? Lantern! Come on! Okay. Maybe we gotta think outside the box here. This is the box. We are inside of it. Guys, what is outside the box? <laughs> Desk? Desk. Mirror. 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 Moss. Mirror. Moss. Mirror! You approach the dusty mirror and gaze into the reflective glass. It's still you. Or at least, the version of you in this REM world. You find yourself entranced in your silver eyes for another moment before you shake your head. Focus, Rex. Yeah! You lean forward, grabbing the mirror with both hands and lifting it off its rusty nail on the wall. Holding it tightly in your grip, you raise it over your head and chuck it down into the... Chuck it down into the grab? <laughs> Chuck it down into the ground. The glass cracks and shatters, disconnecting from the mirror's foundations to scatter across the floor. Well, hopefully no one heard that. You kneel down, examining the damage before reaching your hand down to pick up one of the larger shards which broke off from the mirror. Ah! The sharp pain shoots up your arm, and you drop the shard immediately. One of the sharp edges of glass cut into the palm of your hand, leaving a thin red wound in the center. You wince for a moment, closing your fist around the injury shakily. <sighs> ah, dang it. Hang on. You withdraw the seaweed which was previously wrapped around the ocean letter. You open your palm and begin to bind the wound with thick fibers of seaweed. You can't help but bite your lip as the remnants of salt water mingle with the exposed and sensitive flesh. But eventually you finish bandaging the wound, satisfied with your work. Ugh. <sighs> That should hopefully be enough. Let's keep moving. Much more gingerly, you accept your hand to the shard once more, holding it loosely in your grip as to not cause yourself any more pain. This is a dream you won't get sick eating moss. Yeah, but my, 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 my rational mind is overpowering my intrusive thoughts right now. <sighs> At least I got a shard. Alright, let's see. The patch of moss continues to thrive on the floor of the cell. There's something stuck inside the mound of moss, but you can't quite tell what it is. You try to stick your hand into the moss to fish out the object. The moss is far too thick for your hands to pull apart. Let's see if we can cut it apart, then. 
You kneel down, sitting before the patch of moss with a shard of glass in hand. You rotate the shard, facing the sharp and serrated edge towards the moss fibers, stabbing into the mass of fuzzy green and cutting through it. The glass seamlessly slices through the moss, revealing the item within. Uh huh. You abandon the glass shard and the moss, withdrawing the buried item. Before you, free of the bog, would be a small, strong box with a rusted golden rim. There's a tiny keyhole latching the lo strong box shut. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> yes, this is what the key is for. <gasps> you take out the small golden key from the ocean letter and slot it into the strong box. It's a perfect fit. Turning the key, you hear a quiet and subtle click as the strong box unlocks. You lift the lid and look inside. Within, you find a variety of goods, although most of them seem rather old and worn. The interior of the box reeks of alcohol and salt. And there's a lot of junk in here. How did I... Why am I dreaming up garbage, bro? Alright, what's this? You unravel the parchment and hold it up in front of you. Once upon a time, this may very well have been a treasure map. Now the details of the map have long since faded. You can faintly make out the words Meridian Sea on the paper. Is that the ocean you're in right now? Well, that doesn't matter. This map won't help you get out of here. Let's see, what else is in here? Is this a flask? You pick up an empty silver flask that was left behind in the strong box. The cap of the flask is missing, and there's nothing inside. Perhaps this is the culprit behind the strong alcoholic scent in this box. Ugh. Nasty. Uh, what's this, some kind of note? There's some writing on a small note within the strong box, but I can hardly make any of it out. It seems to be senseless scribbling, and the ink has long since been washed off the paper. Well, that's just crap. Oh, hey, look at play solitaire! Hey! You shake the deck of cards curiously, and only hear a couple of cards left inside the box. You flip open the tab and peek inside. Sure enough, there are four cards still within. A four of diamonds, a nine of hearts, an ace of spades, and a six of clubs. Oh, come on! They couldn't even leave me a full deck? Throw me a bone here! This is just like four cards! Four numbers! Four digits. Hey! 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 Who said that? 4916! Hey, who said that? You! Psychotic Silver! Yes! Alright. I think we might be able to work with that. Maybe this will work. You cannot open this crate. It has a combination lock sealing it shut. It's certain that you don't have the time or patience to try and guess the number combination. I don't need to. That was 4916. You insert the combination of numbers you found in the card deck. Four, nine, one, and then six. To your surprise, a lock clicks open. Alright, that's what I'm talking about! You pump your fists in excitement before slowly lifting the lid off the crate to observe the crate's contents. The items within the crate would be junk for the most part. Cobwebs would stick to the lowest corners and walls of the crate's interior, and you can't help but cough for the dust that blows into your face as soon as you open the lid. There's some stray rods of wood and chunks of flint. As well as a rusty pry bar. Hmm. Rusty pry bar. What the hell do I do with this? Hmm. Wood? Crack? The bar equals floor? Bar on the floor? Whole floor? Floor hole? Whole floor! There's a somewhat large gap in between a couple of planks, but it's too small for your hands to fit through. There might be something stuck in the floor, but it's so dark you can't tell. You lean down and squint into the darkness. You swear that in the sunlight there's something glinting in the pitch blackness. You lift up the pry bar and insert one end into the gap between the planks. You brace yourself, leaning back, leaning back and pushing your body weight into the opposite end of the bar, slowly beginning to pry the plank off of the ground. The wood cracks and shrieks as you dislodge it from its foundations. Eventually, it breaks and splinters apart, causing you to stumble. The metal of the pry bar would now be bent. It doesn't look usable anymore. Ah, it's junk anyway. What's in here? 
You reach your hand into the gaping hole in the floor, your fingers brushing against the space below before gripping around something that was previously trapped beneath the planks. You fish out a rusty saw, its blade turning from silver to bronze. You're not sure how long it must have been under the floor. Perhaps someone dropped it through the gap by mistake. It is rather thin, after all. Huh. Saw looks a little too old to be used as a weapon, but maybe you can still find some use out of it? A saw. Can we saw through the door? Bar's door? Yeah, let's do this. The door to your cell. The rest of the ship's on the other side of it. All you need to do is open it up and... It's still locked. I don't know what else you expected. Let's see if we can saw the hinges off. You attempt to use the saw to break through the door or cut through the bars of the cell. However, the door and the bars would be far too sturdy. You practically feel the saw bending in your hands, and the more you try to get the door or the bars to break, it looks like you'll just have to find another way out. Hmm. Could cannibalize the seat? No, I'm sitting. Well, don't I feel stupid? <sighs> Who thought wood could be so strong, man? Come on! It's wood! How many trees do you think died for this ship? It is a thinking chair. Hmm. Two lanterns. Is that a candle? One bucket. One bed. Pile of crates that are all doo-doo. Moss that has been... Surgically surgical. Hmm. More bars. We can try those bars. These bars. Gaze at the water damaged bars that form your window. A couple of the bars are especially worn, but no amount of tugging with your hands makes them budge. Looking down, you notice that there's some sort of small lip directly outside your window. Person could probably walk along that lip if they were careful. <laughs> hey. If I can walk outside this, then... Yeah! You lift up the saw and start to push it left and right, putting pressure into each stroke in an attempt to carve through the bars. To your surprise, the worn bars begin to buckle to the saw, and you manage to cut a way out of the cell and out to the ship's exterior. And now we're getting somewhere! There's now a hole in the window, enough for you to squeeze your way out of the cell and onto the external lip. Is there anything else we want to do in here? Probably can't come back in once we leave. Hmm. Nah, I think we've got everything we need. Take the bucket. No! Why? My bucket. Oh, we'll come back for you. Once I take over this ship, I'll come back for you. That is water. Okay, and that is deep, deep water. And long water. <sighs> Can't swim. Don't fall. Good advice, good advice. Let's be careful. <clears throat> okay. Solid. Okay. Okay. All right. Why does my game sound a little quieter? Oh, that's why. <laughs> there we go. Hmm. More bars. That's the hallway, right? Yeah, that's... I don't need to go that way. Let's see if we can squeeze through here. You carefully creep around the edge of the ship and make it to another barred window, which leads into the open hallway beyond your cell's door. You look over at your saw. The blade looks ready to snap from the excessive use. I don't plan on staying out here all day, so... Sorry, saw. You've lived a good life. Use the saw on the window into the ship's hallway. However, in the process, the saw's blade would snap off the handle. Looks like that won't be much more use to you. Mm, that's fine. 
Huh? Hey, we're out! We're out! We did it! Good job, Dream Chat! High five! I just high five myself in a hallway. Okay, maybe I need to reevaluate some of my life decisions. Okay, um... Wow, we used to be inside there. That's so crazy. There's my bucket. <laughs> All right. Maybe lay low. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Um, so where are we going? Let's, let, let's come up with a plan right now. All right. So we are outside of our cell. That's step one. What's step two to taking over a ship? Hmm. Hmm. Arson? I need the ship. I can't burn it down. Weapon, weapon. Mm. We haven't had much luck finding those. Maybe the fact that we escaped is intimidating enough. Captain, Captain, mutiny. Mutiny. I like this. I like this idea. Right, right, right. Okay. There's always a captain cabin, right? There's a captain on the ship. Challenge the captain to a duel. Yeah, right? I can, I can challenge, uh, what was her name? Captain Ren. I can challenge her. We just gotta get up to where she is at, which is going to be up, right? Because captains live in that big old cabin on the tops of ships. Yeah, that's right. I watch Pirates of the Caribbean. I know my stuff. All right, where are we going? Two corridors. Huh. Ooh, staircase. Me like staircase. Okay, here we go. I just gotta head up. Oh. As you quietly attempt to sneak up the stairs, you find yourself stumbling back down the steps as you hear two pairs of feet walking closer and closer, emanating from the room you were on the verge of entering. A high-pitched voice sounds, seemingly distressed. It has to be around here somewhere! Come on! A more familiar voice follows, sighing in irritation. Jalen, we don't have time for you to turn the entire ship upside down! Ren said, I heard what she said, Rose, but I'm not steering squat while my fur is all tangled. Oh, come on. Wait, hang on. Fur? Rose speaks up as the footsteps come to a halt within the room up the stairs. You carefully peek over the edge of the railing to see two girls standing in the bar. The one with dark hair you recognize from when you awoke in your cell. And the others have the orange hair and... Wait, is that a foxtail? Oh my god, I swear if we're late to the meeting spot because you lost a comb... What? A tail? Hey! Jalen looks back at Rose, a glare on her face and hands on her hips. It's an important comb. How else am I supposed to brush out my tail, huh? You think fur maintenance is easy? I never said it was. Rose starts before Jalen interrupts her, leaning over the counter of the bar. That's what I thought. So are you going to help me look or are we just going to stand around arguing about this? How do you even know if it's here? Rose asks. Because I specifically remember having it last night! Then, you know, you know those drinks. Rose massages her temples as Jalen continues to lean over the entire bar counter, her legs kicking up and down as she starts fiddling with the shelves directly under the countertop, making even more of a mess with her search. Maybe you left it in one of the mugs, then. In that case, it's probably not even here. It would be downstairs, in the kitchen. Jalen looks back at Rose with a frown. What? You think I left it in a mug? I'm not stupid. No way I did that. Right. <laughs> Fine then. If you're not even going to help me, then I'll just have to look for it myself. I don't care if it takes all day. You've got to be kidding me. It seems that Jalen and Rose aren't going to be moving anytime soon. This is the only staircase you've seen that could lead you to the deck of the ship. If you're going to make your escape, you'll have to make them leave. Somehow. Come on, Dream. Can't you throw me a bone here? <sighs> Seriously? There has to be something I could do here. I'm getting held up by- My grand scheme is being thwarted by a comb! Come on! It was so airtight! How could I have anticipated a comb? Maybe I can just sneak past anyway. If I'm just really sneaky. Jalen, quit tearing up at the bar and get back up to the wheel! I told you, I'm not leaving this spot until I find that comb! Jalen seems keen on staying put, and it seems like Rose won't be going anywhere with her. Without her, you'll have to find a way to get them both to leave. Oh, man! 
Now what? Comb. Well, it's definitely not up there. I bet that one, uh, what was her name? Rose is right. Is it in the kitchen? I said it was downstairs. I'm downstairs. Could it be this way? Find the comb and toss it in a line of sight. Good idea. Good idea. Is this the kitchen? No. Definitely not. So do you actually want a bone? If I can make use of it. <laughs> hmm. It's a dining table. So maybe this is the kitchen. Oh. You carefully open the door to the kitchen, poking your head inside to scope out the area. Another pirate girl would have her back to the door, humming a small tune to herself as she picks up various utensils and cups from a wooden box next to her. You intake a cautious breath as you step inside the kitchen, your eyes locked on the pirate girl. She has blonde hair in an apron tied around her waist. She grumbles a bit, picking up a plate from the box and observing the messy smears across it. Seriously? It doesn't even look like they used a fork. Oh, why are there fingerprints all over it? Ugh. She puts it in the sink, starting to aggressively scrub away the grime. Oh, but it's fine. Winry will just clean it up as usual. Ugh. It's like some of them don't even want to clean up after themselves. Every time there's a party, I'm left to clean the mess. She reaches into the box and pulls out a silver mug. Something would clatter around inside, and the girl pauses. She carefully looks inside the mug, fishing out a simple blue comb and an or with orange hair and fur still hanging from between the teeth. Ew! Is this Jalen's comb? Did she really leave it in a mug yesterday? Gross. The comb! The pirate sets down the mug, looking at the comb and turning around. You quickly duck under the table to remain hidden, watching her as she sets the comb down. Stupid Jalen. Whatever. I'll give it to her later tonight or something. I swear, I'm gonna be in here all day with the amount of work I gotta do. Oh, great. How am I gonna get that comb? Probably not by like, soft-locking herself. We must be still. We must be swift. Comb. She put it on the shelf. Well, it's like red light, green light, but with people. Jeez. You can't be <laughs> Got it. <laughs> mm. Close. Very close. We're going to escape. Oh, like a ninja, like a ninja, like a ninja dream chat. Oh, 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 she didn't know what hit her. Oh, the ultimate heist in history. Oh, I just boosted a comb. Wow, why is that the most impressive thing I've ever done? Huh. Whew. Ah, ninja dread. I like that title. <laughs> we got the comb. Okay. Now all we gotta do is somehow get this to them without giving this to them. Hmm. What was the idea earlier? That someone came up with? Throw the comb. Alrighty, let's give this a shot. Yeah!
That was sucky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we did it. <laughs> you watch the comb silently collide with the floor above the staircase, kneeling down quickly to ensure that you weren't spotted by Jalen and Rose, who continue to bicker nearby. Jalen. Nope, I'm not listening. La 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 la. Don't be so childish. We have more important things to deal with than a missing comb. Jalen huffs, looking away from Rose defiantly and closing her eyes. You heard my terms. I ain't leaving this spot until that comb is back in my hands. Rose goes red in the face for a moment, looking around the bar quickly before her eyes fall on the top of the stairwell. Specifically at the comb you just tossed on the ground. You mean that comb? The one right there on the ground? Jalen perks up, opening one eye and jerking her head over to stare at the comb on the ground. She blinks at it, walking over and kneeling down to pick it up. Did it skip something? Whoops. She hesitates stubbornly. Well, wasn't there before. Right. Sure, it wasn't. Now, if that's all settled, can you please get back to the wheel? Yeah, yeah, I got it. In a huff, and also slight embarrassment, Jalen leaves the bar, comb in hand. Rose watches her go before groaning, shaking her head and departing behind her. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. Oh. Chalk that up. Let's keep a tally. That is a success for Rex, all right? That is one. That is a tally mark and the successes, all right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now we sneak. Okay. It's a big corridor. We don't even need a sneak. Right? No, I kinda wanna check out this room a bit. Don't look at that man behind the curtain chat. Yeah, it didn't happen. What are we talking about? Anyway, what cool bar. Look at this. It's a whole bar. That is a lot of alcohol. These pirates have issues. Ren skip any percent! <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Alright. Let's try this again. Let's see what's this way. Oh. Just as you begin to walk down the halls to find a way above deck, you're forced to stop in your tracks. Down the hall, you overhear two voices getting louder and louder as more of the crew walks directly towards you. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> you tiptoe over to the closed door, pressing your ear against it to quietly listen to the two voices as they approach. You manage to easily make out what they're saying, given how loud they be talking. It sucks that you had to leave early yesterday, Aisha. Drinking nights are always so funny, don't you think? It's not my fault I burned my foot. I mean, it kinda is. You're the one who jumped on that candle while you were running around, jumping on tables. The candle was in my way! It had it coming! Why is everyone on the ship so weird? So, what exactly do you need from here again? Just one of your tools for, uh, no particular reason. Didn't Constance tell you to stay away from the rigging tools? No. Well, if you say so. The voices get even louder, as if they're directly on the other side of the door. The footsteps come to a halt, and you feel your heart drop into your stomach as the door begins to squeak as the knob slowly turns. <gasps> You scramble around quietly, trying to find a decent hiding place. Oh, wait a second, I totally forgot! The knob stops, returning to its neutral state as the voices continue outside. I have to tell you about what happened last night! Don't you think we could get that tool first? I don't want to forget! Come on, you have to hear this. I don't care if it takes all day. Are you serious right now? So, last night, I was about to go to bed because, you know, everyone else was, and I was looking back towards the bar, and I saw Rose and Ren talking, so I was like, huh, I don't know what they're talking about. So I sort of walked back towards the bar to get a little listen, you know, because I was curious. Oh, boy. And Ren was, like, still drinking, because you know how Ren is, and she had this whole mug in their hand, and Rose was all like, hey, maybe just take a break or something like that, right? And Ren was all like, I don't need a break, I need someone to hold my hand. You immediately pull away from the door, deciding not to listen to the rest of the conversation. Yeah, and that's enough of that. I am definitely not a gossip girl. I do not have keen interest there. <sighs> now I'm trapped in a room. And I can't leave. <sighs> Dang. 
Oh, this sucks, and I need to get out of here because they're gonna open that door eventually, and then I'm screwed. Hmm. Diary journal thing? You're right. Hmm, what's this? We open the book and find crude handwriting scrawled across several pages. This book is massive! We flip to somewhere random in the middle. Brock, are we sure that this is okay? The strong man asks the equally strong man. I don't care if it's okay or not. Our love is more important than the opinions of our noble families, Jeff. Brock says with determination and passion. Oh, Jeff. Oh, Brock. You decide to stop reading. And that's enough of that. <laughs> huh. Well, that's not going to be helpful in getting me out of here. <sighs> Jump the railing? <laughs> yeah, let me do that if I have a death wish. I, I cannot be stranded out in the middle of the ocean. Where would I swim to? I see nothing on the horizon. My stamina would last me about maybe 10 meters before I sink like a stone. <sighs> um, this is a hallway and I have more rooms. It's another window, I guess. Yeah. I don't think I could get to that. I could scamper through that door. I love this so much. I'm glad to hear that. You fit under a bed then? Yeah, but I'm not gonna hide all day. Ugh, that's gonna be horrible. You heard them. They're gonna talk forever. I can't wait that long. I'm looking for the high octane, the energy, the action. Look for more books? Ugh. That's not interesting. Boring. Man, the amount of detail in this dream is crazy. Maybe there's something in the desks? Just rifle through these. You dig around through the desks. One of those girls mentioned rigging tools, so surely there must be something useful in here. Turns out, there's another saw! Well, that's great and all, but what exactly do you do next? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> you feel a small, demonic grin spread across your features as you come up with a plan. You'll need a lot of sticks to pull it off, but if you take all the legs off the table, it's going to be really obvious. But what if you take only one leg off every piece of furniture? <laughs> oh crap, I shouldn't be loud. <sighs> <laughs> oh, if this works, if this works, see all these planks, they have gaps in them. <laughs> and this is solid wood. This wood is sturdy. I've got a scheme. <laughs> Oh, yeah, baby. Now that this is working. Oh, boy. That is the ocean. Okay. All right. Hmm. You know what? Fears for the weak. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, whoa, that's supporting my body weight. Oh, okay, I totally expect that to not work. It is working. Okay, all right, awesome, sweet, actually phenomenal. Okay, all right, awesome, gnarly. Just keep going. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, oh, okay, all right. You know what? This ain't hard. This, this is not bad. This is not bad at all. That one might be bad. Oh, no! Okay, all right. We are okay. There's no going back now. There's actually it would be more convenient to go forward than go back. So even if I was having second thoughts, you know, there's no option. This is, uh, I, I've removed my my opportunity of choice. <laughs> oh, that it's just ocean. That is water. There's waves. I am outside on the side of a ship in the middle of the ocean. Okay, you know what? This is. <laughs> All right, awesome. Let's just keep going. You know, nothing bad could happen. All right, let's just. Ah! Oh, 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 oh. 
Okay, 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 I'm doing this. I'm right there. It's the last one I need to make it to. It's like two more jumps. It's two more jumps, Rex. You can do this. All right, okay. Okay, all right, and die made it. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Oh my god. Oh, that was awesome. Oh my god, that was so cool. Oh, I have never done anything that cool ever. Ever before. That's another dub. Come on, tally it up. I need that counter. I need it up. That's a second tally. That is a complete success. I am so dubious. I am absolutely despicable. Oh, whoo. Did anyone doubt? Did anyone not believe me? Take 10 sticks again and go back for the bucket? No, not an option. I'm not doing that again. Oh, okay. All right. That was wicked. Wow. That was really, really cool. Like, really cool. <laughs> wow. Okay. Let's stick around now. I wouldn't want to fall in the terrifying ocean. Yeah, I wouldn't want that either. <laughs> Let's get the bucket. We'll go back. Once the mutiny the ship, our first degree will be getting that bucket back. Okay. Let's see. Or the corridor went on this way. It's a good thing I moved to. It looks like they did go into the room. <sighs> that would have sucked. Okay. Dang, there are a lot of rooms. So how many are there? Huh, no time for doubt. I'm in a dream. I can do whatever I want. I can do this. You know, it doesn't matter if there's a crap ton of pirate chicks. It's fine. <sighs> are these actual cannonballs? Whoa, that's so wicked. Is that gunpowder? It's everywhere. And that is a barrel full of it. That is just dust. Hey, Demi Two Wolfie, thank you for following. And Jessica Scott, thank you to you too. Huh. Okay. Interesting. More stairs. Okay, how far down are we in this ship? Seriously, how many levels are there? Were we at the bottom? I have no idea. Hmm. I hear something. Wait, what? You faintly overhear a conversation through the door. You take long and quiet strides to stand in front of the door, leaning forward and narrowing your eyes to listen to the two voices that are conversing within. Once you completed the trade, there will be nothing more for you to worry about. Mm, still, this other crew Ren contacted. Have you heard about them at all? Obviously. I prefer keeping tabs on potential clients. So it will be safe. If it weren't, I wouldn't have approved of it. There's some shuffling from within. Besides, if you're that concerned, Diane agreed to keep watch from the crow's nest and inform us if she spots anything suspicious. By the sounds of it, she'll almost certainly be up there all- Yup, all day. Got it. Cool. Great. <sighs> okay. Crow's nest. As in prime lookout position. Oh, crap. It's the deck. Oh, it's the deck. So have you ever climbed a rope? <laughs> have I? Okay. I think even if we wanted to, we'd have to get to the other side of the deck. Okay. Great. Hmm. We're gonna have to be devious again. <gasps> that's gotta be the goal, though. I bet that's the cabin. That right there. I'm right there! I just need to get to the other end of the ship. Just right there. So let's Snake grab a box. There are a lot of crates. We can make use of the crates. Hmm. She's definitely got to be up there. Okay. 
if we stay low and we hide behind barrels and boxes, we should be good. Okay. Can she even see me? Huh. I wonder. And there's a possibility of not. Okay. We're still doing great. Hmm. Where do I go from here? I need to avoid being spotted. Oh, are the poles broken? That sucks. This way. Okay. Hmm. Looks like I have a choice here. I can go that way or I can go that way. Hmm. Maybe this way? It's the rope. Mm. Just cross-dress problem solved. Hmm. That is almost certainly one of the ideas of As you continue to sneak across the deck, suddenly you would hear a whistle from my above in the crow's nest, and a posh voice sounds. Hmm. Anyone down there? I could have sworn I saw something. <laughs> You quickly retreat, afraid of being caught. Luckily, it doesn't seem you've been spotted. Unluckily, you've lost some progress. Better be more careful. I can't let that happen again. <sighs> Alright, not that way. She'll definitely see me if I go that way. Okay, fine. Oh, what was the route that we just took? We didn't go that way. We'll definitely get spotted if we go that way. Let's go this way. Okay, not that way. Definitely not that way. Okay. Oh, Queen, thank you for the prime sub. Hmm. Do you throw one of your sticks as a distraction? Oh, what, that distracts them too much. I don't want them to come down. Hmm. It would require me to have a bet in like a different outfit. They kind of gave me this one. Maybe I can full send it to that one. It's kind of far, but... <gasps> okay. Well, there's the rope. Oh, yeah, I'm not climbing that today. No, not right now. I need to save my energy. There it is. Hey, here we go. Yeah, this is definitely got to be it. All right. Yeah! Yeah, we didn't even get spotted! Not a soul knows we're here! You're so smooth! That's three for O! Three for O! Oh, it's so clean. Mmm! Nice! Alrighty. Now, let's amp ourselves up, chat. Let's do this, alright? Um? Uh... Um... You stare at the pirate in confusion, finding yourself at a loss for words momentarily. She grits her teeth, glaring down her nose at you and crossing her arms. You're not supposed to be up here. How'd you even manage to escape your cell? <laughs> wasn't that hard. And shouldn't be that hard for you to turn around and go back in your cage. Or do you have a death wish? She narrows her eyes. <laughs> It might not be too far off, actually, if you decided to tump stumble into Ren's cabin. Wait, so this is her cabin? Huh. I'm at the right place. She raises an eyebrow. Right place? What did you think you were going to do in here? I'm here to take over this ship. The pirate pauses, staring at you in disbelief. Excuse me? That's right. You announce, confident, you announce confidently. I'm going to take on the captain. And then, hey, wait, wait a second. You look around the captain cabin, befuddled. You recognize the pirate girl, but you're not the captain. Why are you in here? She blinks at you. There's an awkward moment of silence as she opens her mouth, trying to make up an excuse before just scoffing. <laughs> Shut up. Why would I tell you anything, huh? You're an idiot for coming all the way up here, thinking you have the power to take on Ren. As if it even let you get the chance. Oh, I get it. You're the mini boss. Um, yeah, I could probably take you. 
What? The room seems to get slightly warmer as soon as you say that. The pirate just stares at you. Sorry, I don't think I heard you. You want to repeat that? She cracks her knuckles, walking forward. Were her eyes always that bright and orange? I mean, you're just some chick. Plus, you don't even have a weapon. As soon as you say this, she drops her fist to her side, and you watch as they magically burst into flames before your eyes. How did she do that? Big mistake, moron. Oh my god, how are you on fire? You're dead! What? Whoa! 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 What the heck? Whoa! What are you doing? Why are you on fire right now? Does it hurt? Oh! Okay, you're shooting me. You are throwing fire at me actively. I am not enjoying this. Okay. No! 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 Stay away! 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 Ah! 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 Okay. 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 Okay, as long as we hide, if we just, if we hide, we, we, can't, we can't die. <laughs> Dad, good! Okay, you know what? No, stop it! <laughs> She's throwing so much fire right now. Okay, okay, okay. She mellowed out a bit? Bill Kate, stop it! Duh. Oh, the place is burning! Oh, that's so cool! Oh, that's so nice! That's so sweet! Okay, okay, okay! You know what? You know what? No, 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 no. We're, good. we're good, 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 we're great, we're so great, we're so fine, we're so amazing right now, we're doing awesome, you know what? We're just, we're just gonna go. <gasps> Not that way! We're not going that way! <laughs> No, ah! 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 okay. No, 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 leave me alone. Whoa, whoa, okay, this place is falling apart. I don't like this. I'm not enjoying this. Okay, all right. Oh, we may have lost her. We didn't lose her. We gotta keep running. Okay, and we cannot leave. Okay, that really sucks. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, you know what? I, I hate this. I can't think of anything I hate more than I can't leave. Okay, I am dead. I am so dead. Why would she on? Fire! Oh! Whoa! Ah! Okay, okay. Um, what the heck? Nah! Sure, I just gotta jump. Screw this! Ah! Ah! Oh! Oh! Okay, I take it back. You're crazy strong. Can we talk about this? Hold still, you worthless little. Ow! 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 Ah! That's a lot of fire. Ah! Any last words? Please be gentle. You're dead! What the hell is going on? Uh. Uh. Ah! Sit on the ground, still panting slightly after your encounter with Alice. Ren and Rose both stand in front of the two of you. Alice would appear rather sheepish, while Ren's brow would be furrowed in anger. Your heart is still pounding out of your chest. What just happened? Do one of you want to explain to me why my cabin is on fire? And why is that one out of his cell? In here, this, on fire. How? What do you mean, how? Rose looks down at you. Surely your amnesia didn't make you forget about magic. What? The, what? There's magic in this dream too? Cut it out with this dream talk! I swear all day you've been dream this and dream that! You look pretty awake to me, Rex! Now, one of you start talking, and can you please turn the fire off, Ellis? Ellis quickly puts her hands behind her back, the finder around her unclessed fist extinguishing itself. Her eyes return to a normal amber color, and the orange glow in her hair also vanishes. What? She just tried to kill me with magic! Well, he was the one who raided your cabin talking about how he was going to cause a mutiny. And then she tried to kill me with magic. Okay, that's enough. Rin puts up her hand, silencing the both of you. She massages both of her temples with her two fingers. A beam from the feeling would fall, crushing a table. She jumps at the sound before snapping her head back to glare at the two of you. Congratulations, Alice. That table was mahogany. Yeah, Alice, nice job. 
You don't get to act so cocky either. What makes you think you're in any position to act like a winner? I don't know how you escaped your cell, but you're going right back down there. And I'm taking your bucket, you hear me? No, no, come on, man, not the bucket! Rose steps forward, however. Just a second, Ren. Think about this for a minute. We were all under the assumption that Rex was, well, useless. Hey! You start to protest. But not only did he manage to escape the cell, he even snuck all the way up to your cabin and survived an encounter with Ellis. What are you trying to say, Rose? The very fact that he could break out makes him a useful asset. At the very least, means he's another body that could be put to work on the ship before we reach the drop-off point, Rose explains. What? You can't be serious, Ellis interjects. Rose, he literally admitted to trying to plan a mutiny, Ellis motions to you. True, but you seem to have no trouble stopping him. I mean, look at him. Rose just stares at you. You really think he actually knows what he's doing? He's grasping at straws at best. It's actually kind of sad. Point is, he's harmless. He's not useless. And we can always use another pair of hands. But uh, I'm right here. He belongs in a cell! I didn't just beat the crap out of him for him to walk free! Ellis protests. Well, after you manage to burn my old cabin, you're lucky you're not going in the cell, Ren shoots at Ellis. Uh, I can't say I'm a fan of the idea either. But Rose makes some good points. As unfortunate as that is. Well, how do you know I won't try to take over the ship again? Without even a moment of hesitation, Ren would draw a pistol from the holster at her hip, leveling it between your eyes. She just raises an eyebrow at you. This answer your question? So what do you need me to do around here? That's what I thought. <laughs> Ren chuckles, putting the pistol away. All right. I'll humor this idea of yours, Rose. It wouldn't hurt to have another body to clean up around here. Since this was your idea, you'll be the one to give him a tour of the ship. Get him familiar with everyone and show him to his room. I think we still have a bed open downstairs. She turns to Ellis. As for you, you'll be cleaning my cabin up. And you can start by putting out all the fires. Ellis would open her mouth to speak against Ren, but eventually she just growls, casting you a hateful glare before storming away to stamp out the flames in the office. Ren sighs, glancing back at Rose. Better know what you're doing. Rex, Rose approaches you. Follow me outside. I'll get you acquainted with our crew and show you around. Right. <sighs> Good day. Good day. I almost became a s'more. That was crazy vivid for a dream. Oh. At least you get promoted from prisoner to indentured servant. That's gotta be something, right? Does that count as a dub in the tally mark? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> All right, what's up? Rose glances back at you from outside the burning cabin, her hands on her hips. She gives you a mildly suspicious gaze up and down before clearing her throat. Hmm. I suppose it's about time I properly welcomed you to the crew of the Sirens, Rex. For the next few days, you'll be working with us and helping clean the ship top to bottom. Is that clear? Yep. Crystal. Perfect. In that case, I'll be introducing you to each of the members of our crew and ensuring you're familiar with the ship's layout. She looks out at the horizon. The sun has just started to set. Once you've met everyone, you'll be situated in a room below deck so you can rest before you're immediately put to work. Can I just ask... Why did you help convince Ren to let me out of the cell? I believe my reasonings are rather clear in my argument. We're not a particularly large crew, especially for a ship of this size. Therefore, it's not always easy to complete every task on board. Since you managed to escape your cell, I knew you weren't as useless as you look. At the very least, 
It can use you for labor before selling you. Right. Almost forgot about that selling part. Where we are right now is the deck. From here, we can access the ropes that rig the sails, the wheel of the ship, and the crow's nest. Additionally, this is where we keep the cannons. Look out below! An older woman's voice calls from above. Hmm? You and Rose both glance up as a pirate in a blue dress and dark-colored leggings would slide down the rope attached to the mast. Her heeled boots touch the ground with a satisfying clatter, and she sighs, brushing herself off. She notices Rose first. Nothing but ocean blue, as far as the eye can see. I'm absolutely knackered. You, you were all the way up there? Hmm? Oh, blimey. The woman leans forward. It must be that bloke from the stars. I didn't know you were up and about. Looking rather well for someone who plummeted into the ocean. Yeah, I'm not feeling too bad for plummeting either. His name is Rex, Rose says. Rex, meet Diane. She's our lookout and the sharpest set of eyes on the entire crew. Indeed I am. Nothing gets past these eyes, I tell you. Yeah, about that. But, but hang on. Last time I was on deck, you were still in prison, weren't you? But now look at you. You're about as happy as a lark walking around without a better care in the world. Yes. <laughs> a bit cheeky as well, are we? Well then, I dare say you'll fit right in with the rest of us rapscallions. That is, if you're officially joining our crew here. Not exactly. But for the time being, that's correct. Rose nods. Brilliant. I look forward to seeing more of you in the future, Rex. Till then, excuse me, spending too much time in the crow's nest makes me rather famished. Cheers, Rose. Ta-ta. Right. Uh, see you uh, around. Diane departs. Rose glances back at you, motioning for you to follow her with her head. Come on. I'll show you the helm before we go below deck. Hmm. The helm? Which way's the helm? Where is the helm again? This way. It's gotta be. Hmm. Boats on boat! Look, it's baby boats! They're baby boats! Oh. Oh, it's them! As you approach the helm of the ship, you see the orange-haired girl from the bar messing with the fluffy mask behind her. She would brush her comb through the fur carefully, her tongue sticking out of her mouth as she does this. Uh, hello? She quickly stands at attention, hiding her comb behind her pocket, as her fuzzy tail swing behind with her fuzzy tail swing behind her casually. Uh, hey, what did you get here, Rose? I was just about to get to steering. Right. Rose just stares at her, unconvinced. Wait, isn't that the prisoner guy? What's he doing up here? Rose motions to the girl. Rex, this is Jalen. She mans the helm of the ship and keeps us on course. Despite how she seems, she's rather skilled with directions and understanding ocean currents. Although her antics can get the better of her at times. Jalen, this is Rex. He'll be helping her out around the ship for a few days. Still, your eyes can't help but linger at the foxtail that moves behind Jalen. Almost as if you were entranced. You've seen people wearing the fake ears and tail before, but you've never seen anything that looks this real. And the fox ears, are, are those coming out the sides of her head? Uh... What's with the stare, huh? Jalen frowns, putting her hands on her hips. If you got something to say, say it in my face! Do, do you have a... tail? Eh? She glances back at her tail. Well, duh! What'd you think it was? I can't even chase it if I wanted to! Watch this! Jalen, no. Rose quickly steps in as Jalen gets into a lunging position, ready to spin in a circle chasing her own tail. Jalen groans. Ugh, you're no fun. <laughs> Why are you acting so surprised, huh? Haven't you ever seen a tail before? Not that rare. He's an amnesiac, Rose explains. Oh! There's a moment of silence. Rose blinks at Jalen before speaking. You don't know that word, do you? No. Wait, so you steer the ship? You bet! See? Jalen! Jalen grabs the wheel of the ship and spins it, causing the entire ship to lean to the left. You and Rose can't help but stumble, with you falling backwards unceremoniously. Jalen levels out the ship once more and giggles. Rose glares. Why did you do that? I don't know. I thought it'd be fun, and it was! She pauses. What were we talking about again? Rose massages her temples, was helping you to your feet. You'll have to forgive her. As I said, her antics get the better of her, and multitasking is not her strong suit. 
Let's continue on, shall we? I guess, yeah. Oh, me oh my. <sighs> guess we start heading down then. Burning cabin. <laughs> hmm. As you and Rose walk below deck, the doors would suddenly swing open as you reach for the handle, hitting you as a result of your close proximity. Yeah. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to swing the door at you like that. You shake your head, rubbing your brow in slight irritation. Before you'd be a young woman with light pink hair. You recognize her voice from when you were hiding away in one of the cabins. Nah, nah, I'm good. Hello, Lorelai. It's lucky we actually ran into you. Rex, I'd like you to meet the ship's lead rigger. Lorelai is the one who mans the sails of the ship, Rose explains. Nice to meet- that's me! Nice to officially meet you, Starboy! <laughs> right. Nice to- wait, 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 Starboy? Honestly, I'm a little surprised at how well everyone seems to be treating you. After you escaped your cell, I thought Ren or Rose would be having your head for sure. But it looks like things worked out if you're getting introduced to everyone. Wait, wait, hang on, you knew I escaped? You knew he escaped, Rose echoes. I mean, yeah. I heard some guy cackling really loudly in my room earlier, and he's literally the only guy on the ship, so I put two and two together. So I don't know what he did in there, though. Why didn't you say anything to me? Or if to Ren, for that matter? Hey, chill out. It wasn't my business, okay? Huh. Oh, come on. Don't give me that face, Rose. Besides, what was I supposed to say to you anyways? I feel like you haven't talked to me in so long. We've been preoccupied with other things, Lorelai. That's all. Lorelai continues. You know, now that I think about it, I don't think we've actually talked since that one time when we were all drinking at the bar and he got so drunk that when Ren walked into the room, he totally puked all over her. Rose is silent, staring at Lorelai in anger and embarrassment, her entire face turning red. Um? Uh, sorry... There's an awkward moment of silence. I'm just gonna go. Thanks for including me in your tour. Okay, bye! Lorelai quickly retreats, leaving with a very embarrassed Rose. D you puked on your captain? <laughs> Full story! Leave it to Lorelai to forget the details. I went drinking. That night, the other girl spiked my drink to try to get me to loosen up. This to say, I won't be participating in drinking nights anymore. She shakes her head, quickly concealing her embarrassment. Let's just move on, shall we? <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, who is this? A rather professional-looking young woman would stand in the lobby of the ship's interior. She has a clipboard in her hand and would be taking notes with a purple quill. She doesn't look up at you as or Rose as you approach. Uh... Yo. Rex, this is Serena, Rose explains. She handles appraisals and identifying an item's worth on the REM market. Serene doesn't re re Serena doesn't respond, still taking notes and giving you no signs of acknowledgement. Serena, this is Rex. Hmm. She still doesn't look up. Rose blinks, hesitantly continuing. He... Was the prisoner we had below deck? He's going to be helping us for a couple days. Mm-hmm. Can she actually see us, or... <sighs> She's a rather busy woman. That's all. Let's just continue for now, shall we? Serena makes no efforts to stop you as you both step away. Okay. Guess she's really busy with whatever's on that clipboard. An older woman would stand in the ship lobby, meticulously adjusting some flowers in a vase atop a table. She hums to herself, a gentle expression across her face. Rose clears her throat to get the woman's attention. <clears throat> hello, Constance. Rose! Hello there! I'm sorry, I was lost in thought. Constance notices you and pauses. You're that boy from the sky, aren't you? The one that Rand had planned on... <clears throat> selling? Yeah, that's me. I guess. Oh my god! Constance looks down, her eyes resting on your palm in concern. Oh, what happened to your hand, dear? Hmm? Oh, I just cut it on some glass earlier. Oh my. 
A glass cut? That must have hurt quite a bit, didn't it? She walks over to you and takes your hand carefully into hers, observing your wrapped wound. Luckily, you managed to bandage the wound, de bandage the wound decently, so it probably isn't infected. I mean, I, I did the best with what I had. Constance is the doctor on board, Rose explains. She's skilled with medicine and provides the crew with the necessary remedies to physical injuries or ailments. Oh, yeah? I'm so sorry you were injured in that dingy cell, Rex. Don't worry, I can help patch you up, all right? Constance, don't be so nice to him. He's a prisoner. Oh, come on, Rose. Don't be so cold. He's harmless. She turns to you. I know it's getting late, so how about this? First thing tomorrow, you come down to the infirmary, okay, sweetie? I'll fix up that hand of yours, no problem. Sure. Thanks. Until then, Constance turns towards the doors out to the deck. Rose, did he and Ellis really get into some big fight? Unfortunately, Ellis should be in Ren's cabin cleaning things up. I should go check on her then, see if she's injured at all. <laughs> Trust me, she's not. Take care of yourself, Rex. I'll see you tomorrow. Rest well. She smiles kindly before rushing off to check on Alice. Rose crosses her arms and looks back at you. Come on. Everyone else should be downstairs. Okay. Alrighty. A person amongst all of the the powders, the dust, if you will. You go down the stairs and immediately overhear angry grumbling coming from the young woman nearby. She has a broken broom in her hands and is sweeping up some gray powder. There's a broken barrel to her right. <laughs> Stupid barrel made of wood, nothing stamp proof. But it, it is, is all of that gunpowder? I see you've made yet another mess, Aisha, Rose states, crossing her arms. It's not my fault our barrels are too weak to withstand a sword. So really, this mess is the barrel's fault. Mmm. The girl looks towards you with an unimpressed expression, her eyes moving up and down to observe you fully. Who's the runt? But I'm, I'm taller than you! Rose pauses. He's the prisoner, remember? Oh, right. Wait, the doesn't that mean he should, you know, be in prison? He'll be helping her on the ship for the time being. Oh. Welcome to the crew, I guess? No, that's not right either. Well, I mean, it kind of is until the whole selling thing. Wait, hang on. If he's not a prisoner, but he's also not part of the crew, then what's he supposed to be, huh? He's simply going to lend a hand where one is needed. Uh-huh. So... He's part of the crew. No... All right then, Rex. Now that you're in the crew, Aisha, I swear, let's put you to work. Task number one, fighting! You know anything about fighting? No? All right, take this sword! She shoves a sword into your hands. Where did she even get the sword from? She wasn't holding one before. What you're gonna do is slash it at that barrel as hard as you can! No! Rose quickly steps in, taking the sword from you. We're not giving him a weapon! I was a real sword in my hands. I just held an actual sword. I have never held a sword before. That was a sword. Aw, lame. There's a pause before Aisha continues. So, can I give him a broom to sweep with? Not now. He's about to go to sleep. I mean, I can sweep tomorrow. Ah, dang it! In a fit of rage, Aisha takes the broom in her hands and snaps it over her knee aggressively, holding the halves in either hand. Rose just stares at her as she pants from doing this. Well, Rose says, at least it wasn't your actual knee this time. Is she always like this? Pretty much, Rose explains. Aisha is our weapon master. However, as skilled as she is as a fighter, her real talent comes in finding new ways to hurt herself in the process. You both glance back at Aisha, who continues to sweep at the broken broom, beginning to grumble to herself once more. Huh. Well, good luck with that. She just snapped a broom over her knee. Holy crap. <gasps> hey! You and Rose both enter the cleaning closet and notice a familiar face within the room. A young girl from before, Carrie, would be folding some clean rags into neat squares before placing them on the shelves above her. She glances at you both as you approach. Uh, uh hey, Rex. I know you! You brought me food! Yep, that's me. <laughs> 
She laughs awkwardly before pausing. Uh, uh, wait, what are you doing with Rose? D did something happen? He escaped his cell. Oh! But, but instead of going back in there, they're letting me help out around here. Oh, that's good news then, right? I mean, it's probably better news than being locked below deck for several days. <laughs> yeah, you can say that again. Rose interjects. Carrie hears our boat swing. I would gamble that not many people aboard know the ship better than her. Carrie rubs the back of her neck awkwardly. What, boat swing? But that sounds so cool! What do you do? <laughs> well, uh, simply put, she cleans. You clean? I clean. I, I mean, that's cool. It's not. No, no, it's not. Why does everyone else have a cool job and Carrie's stuck cleaning? Carrie's our newest recruit to the Sirens, Rose explains. And all new recruits start off as boat swains. Say what you will about the job not being cool, but a boat swain is a lot of responsibility. I'm sure that in due time, Carrie will be able to work up to performing other tasks. <laughs> in that case, you'll do great, Carrie. <laughs> Thanks, she pauses. I don't mean to cut this short or anything, but I do have to go for now. I have to help clean up one of the cabins. Apparently, some of the legs on the furniture are missing? Ah, <laughs> Weird! I'll see you around, though, Rex! Carrie gives you a kind wave before leaving the cleaning closet completely. Okay, then, um, who, 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 who's next? <laughs> Let's see. I don't see anyone. I wonder where the room is. Rose is still walking, so I guess we keep walking. Oh! It's this person. The pirate girl from the kitchen will be found in the ship's hallway, moving carefully past every door, her eyes shifting to and fro. As you and Rose approach, she becomes visibly more tense, her eyes widening at you in particular. She bends her knees to lower herself into a defensive position. What the heck is he doing here? D you know, it's usually a hello works. Calm down, Winry. Rose puts her hand up. No need to get so worked up with him. He won't do anything. That doesn't answer my question, Rose. I'm just finishing up my tour. Tour? Rex, this is Winry, our chef. Winry, this is- I know who he is! Now just tell me why he's here already! Rose blinks, stepping in front of you to come between you and Winry carefully. Come on, what's your problem with me, huh? Winry looks at you, her eyes flicking up to look into yours for a moment before she would jerk her head to gaze elsewhere, visibly shivering. She lowers her voice to speak to Rose. Rose, you can't be serious with this tour stuff. How do you know that any of this is safe? He's not going to hurt anyone. Actually, he's pretty harmless. And stupid. Why does everyone say that? But the eyes, Rose. The eyes. I'm aware. He'll bring bad news for everyone on the ship. I'm not telling you to be his friend. But trust me when I say that he won't cause you any harm, Winry. I still don't trust him! Just look at him! He's definitely hiding something! What would he have to hide? Rose narrows her eyes. He doesn't remember anything. Nice to meet you, too. Winry looks back at you and sighs, face palming and stepping past Rose. <sighs> look, it's nothing personal. I don't know you, and you don't know me. So obviously I'm going to be suspicious of you, right? In my eyes, you're just some random guy. Yeah, actually, that's fair. What? Don't agree with me! What, do you want me to disagree with you? Yes! No, maybe... No, I don't know! You're confusing me! Look, like, where I'm from, strange men don't just fall from the sky. Surely you see where I'm coming from here, right? So, where are you from? I'm from... Hey! <laughs> so close. Worth a shot. All right. Rose steps in once more. That's enough, Rex. Stop teasing Winry. And Winry, stop antagonizing Rex. Oh, whatever. But I've got my eyes on you, Rex. Keep him away from my space. And with that, Winry leaves in a hurry, glancing over her shoulder at you cautiously as she leaves. <laughs> well, she seems nice. That's that. Is this the room? I'm gonna presume so. Oh, yeah. Rose opens the door for you, waving her hand and allowing you to enter first. And this will be your room on the ship. You should feel grateful that Ren let you stay up here instead of staying in your cell. I get this whole room to myself? Not exactly. 
Before you can react, a small form would rush at you from the right, decorated side of the room. Small arms wrap around your waist and squeeze you tightly. What? Yay, a new friend! Your name's Rex, right? I heard, that you're, I heard that was your name. That's so cool! You look down at the small form of a child hugging you around the middle. The girl has small horns coming out of her head, and her clothes are worse for wear. And she has a huge grin on her face all the same. Whoa, who are you? Rex, meet Julia. You'll be bunking with her for the next few days. Rose chuckles. <laughs> That's me. My name's Julia. It's nice to meet you. I'm bunking with a child. Mm-hmm. Rose smirks, reveling in your shock and frustration. Now, if you're going to be staying here, you got to know that the right side of the room is already mine. So you can't have it, you hear? You can't stay on the left side over there. And you can't touch any of my stuff without asking. Bleh. She sticks her tongue out at you playfully with a small giggle. Yeah, no way. I'm not doing this. Oh, so you prefer to stay in the cell then? Rose raises an eyebrow. <sighs> That's what I thought. So then what's she do around the ship? Rose stares at you for a moment with a serious expression. Rex, she's a child. Hey! Julia pipes up. I may be a kid, but I'm the bravest pirate around here. I lead everyone in a battle. Right behind Ren, of course. Well, you're certainly ambitious for your size. Thank you. Rose would take a step out of the room. If you have no more questions then, Rex, I'll leave you to get settled with your bunkmate. I'll be back tomorrow to wake you up and get you ready for your day. Let me know if you need anything. She pauses. Don't need anything. Right. Good night, Rex. Good night, Julia. Good night, Rose. Rose closes the door behind her, leaving you alone with Julia, who looks up at you and giggles. <laughs> this will be fun. Oh, boy. I guess this is like the punchline of the joke. Let's see what we're working with. Oh, they actually gave me a room like everyone else. Like a proper honest-to-god room. Books are pretty lame. There's a bowl. I guess this is for food. That's kind of useful. Desk to write at. I'm not sure if I'm in the mood to write in a dream. Oh, I got some drawers. I don't have much to put in them. Maybe I could store the saw that I stole. Maybe I should give that back. Maybe I stash the uh, evidence of my crime. Both of those are viable options. Do you want something? As you finish checking out your side of the room, the child, Julia, approaches you. So... Rex, huh? I've never met anyone with a name like that. Where are you from? Not around here. Well, I knew that part. When we found you, everyone was talking about how you fell from the sky. And then we pulled you up from the sea like a fish. She pauses, thinking to herself. I don't think dreads are supposed to come from the sky. Did it hurt when you fell? Not really. It was kind of painless, actually. That's weird. When most people hit the water from a high place, they go all like, SPLAT! At least that's what Ren said when we fished you up. Everyone was really surprised that you were still in one piece. I think I'm just lucky. You must be super strong if you can survive a fall like that. She beams at you expectantly, but you just slouch. Well, according to the crew, I'm not. She pauses, staring at you for a moment. She would waddle over to stand directly under you with a big grin. Well, I think you look pretty strong, even if no one else does. You have a white streak in your hair, and cool eyes, and you got horns just like me, see? She pokes the horns coming out of her head. So, I guess that means you're a dread too. Mm-hmm. Or, that's what Ren says anyways. I didn't really know all that much about dreads besides what Ren told me. So what's your deal with Ren? Oh, Ren took me in and let me stay on her ship a year ago, I think. It's kind of hard to tell how long it's been on a boat. But every day has been super duper fun. And she just, like, d did that? Like, no ulterior motives or anything? The child looks at you in confusion. Uh... Did she want something? Or Oh, you're a kid. That's stupid. Who am I kidding? You don't seem to like very Ren very much, do you? Julia frowns. But I don't see why not. Ren's super nice. She locked me in a cell. 
pointed a gun at me, yelled at me. That's just Ren. She's like that with everyone she meets for the first time. You just gotta get on her good side and make her feel comfy around you and stuff. Her good side, huh? How am I supposed to do that? Well, when I first came on board, I was kind of scared too. But then I started telling jokes, and Ren wasn't as scary anymore. Like, one time, I replaced all the flour in the kitchen with baking soda. <laughs> what? And another time, I replaced all their smelly rum with apple juice. <laughs> Wait, that seems like the kind of stuff that would get you in trouble. I guess sometimes, yeah. But Ren would always tell me, that's okay, Julia, when I messed up. See? She's not scary at all. Huh. Oh, and every time she's proud of me, she gives me a coin! Look it, see? She rushes over to her side of the room and takes a small pouch off the shelf, rushing back over to you and holding up a coin. Isn't Ren the coolest? What? The, what? This kid's getting paid! Whenever she gives me a coin, she tells me the best way to gain respect from others is to give respect yourself. And giving me a coin is kind of like her giving me respect. And telling my jokes and helping out is kind of giving my respect back to Ren. You see? So, the best way to gain Ren's respect is by showing her respect, too. Mm-hmm. You got it. She gives you a thumbs up. So... How do I do that? The child pauses. Uh, I, uh... I don't really know that part. I don't know if she would like if you told my jokes. That would be stealing. Yeah, I'm sure that's the reason. Maybe you can do something she really likes. Like, sometimes when it's late at night and I'm not tired, I'll go outside and sing everyone a song so that they can sleep better. I wrote the song myself. Yeah, I can't do that. Um, oh, but sometimes when it rains, I like to jump around in the puddles and Ren joins me and kicks up the water on the deck. It's really fun. You know, somehow I don't think that will be as charming coming from me. Hmm. There's gotta be something you can do. The child frowns. Why are you helping me? Why wouldn't I? You're my friend now, and I like helping my friends. Plus, if my friends don't like each other, it's no fun. She yawns. Huh. So I'm gonna try and help you gain Red's respect, like I did. This is a mission now, a cold secret mission, like the kind that the rest of the crew goes on sometimes. Huh. Thanks, kid. Julia yawns again. We just gotta put our brains together to figure out what to do. Maybe we can pick that up tomorrow, kid. Too a little young to be up this late. Hey, I'm a big girl, you know. I told you I'm the bravest pirate in this crew. Ren says I'm a little too young to do any of the real pirate stuff. But when I grow up, nothing's gonna stop me. Good for you, then. But I need my beauty sleep. She stares at you as you walk as you walk over she stares at you as you walk over to your bed to get ready to sleep. She pauses, looking at the pouch still in her palms, before she would waddle back over to you and take out a coin. Here, take this. <laughs> What's this for? I think you're cool, so you should take it. She smiles. If you're feeling tired, then I guess you can start the operation tomorrow. But you gotta promise. <laughs> Alright then. I promise. Yay! She yawns again. <sighs> okay. I guess if you're going to sleep, I will too before the big day tomorrow. Good night, Rex. Night, Julia. Sweet kid. <sighs> I guess this dream has to end somehow. <sighs> Let's just rest up. Once more, you find yourself consumed by darkness. Your eyes are closed, but as you start to rouse yourself, you can faintly make out voices, as well as the sound of the ocean. That's strange. You don't live that close to the ocean. Unless... Good morning, Rex! You feel a sudden pressure and pain on your chest, as if something small just jumped on top of you. Oh my god! You sit up, your eyes adjusting to the candlelight. Your head spins from your sudden jerk to consciousness in a swaying of the entire room. You would find the small dread child, Julia, laying on top of you and giggling to herself, 
Well, Rose wouldn't be too far away, leaning against the doorframe and chuckling at Julia's antics. What? What? I'm still here? I thought I would have awoken by now. But you did wake up, silly! Julia says, pushing herself off of you to stand at your bedside. But, but, but you didn't have to jump on me, Julia! Rose rocks forward. You have a big day ahead of you, Rex. Hope you're well prepared for it. I mean, pff, can't do much else than be prepared, so... That's the spirit, Rose nods. Your task should be rather simple. I want you to go around the ship and lend a hand to whoever help is needed, be that cooking or cleaning. Is that clear? Yeah, you got it. Most of the crew has already had breakfast and begun their duties for the day. Once you've gotten yourself ready, you can go ahead and meet them on the deck. Although, Rose pauses, pointing at your hand. Constance said she wanted you to. She wanted blah, blah, blah. Constance said she wanted you to go down and visit her to get your palm sorted, right? Oh yeah, crap! I almost forgot about that. Go ahead and see Constance before you start your work, okay? Rose states. Can't exactly finish any chores around the ship if you have an injured hand. Constance is really good at ma making people feel better after they get hurt. Julia nods. She has to help Aisha feel better all the time. Yeah, some of that doesn't surprise me. If that's all, Rose continues, then I'll leave you both to finish getting ready. Constance will be waiting for you in the infirmary, which is one floor down from here. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Rose gives you a nod, acknowledging your response, before leaving you and Julia alone in the cabin room once more. Phew! Alrighty! Now that Rose is gone, we can talk more about our plan! What, what, what plan? Our super secret plan! Remember? You said we'd talk more about Operation Earns Rend Respect in the morning, and now it's morning. She grabs you by the arm, practically pulling you out of the bed with her limited childish strength. Come on! Easy, that's not hurt, Aunt! The child drags you out to the center of the room, before turning to face you with a determined expression on her face. Okay, I had an idea while I was sleeping. Well, sorta. I had a really cool dream last night, and then when I woke up, I was trying to remember it. I was the captain of my own pirate crew, but, I wasn't, but it wasn't this crew, it was a totally different one. I don't remember anyone else who was on the crew, I just know that one of them might have had a fishtail or something. They were all really nice, and they were going on cool adventures, riding on a ship that sailed through rainbows. Okay, what does this have to do with your idea? I'm getting to that, the child pouts. Anyway, so when I woke up, I tried to remember it and write it down so I could tell Ren about it today. She waddles over to the desk on her side of the room and grabs a couple of papers. On each of these papers would be a great deal of messy scribbles and writing. And that's when I thought of my idea! You should do this for Ren! Write her about my dreams? Not just your dreams! Write her something! Ren likes it when you write her little letters. I'll make her notes and then slip them into her office all sneaky and stuff. And sometimes she even writes me back! It's really fun. So maybe if you wrote a letter to Ren, you and her could get to know each other better or something. You could write something from in here. She puts a hand on her heart, grinning at you. <laughs> from the heart, huh? Mm-hmm. You could write about something nice about her that you really, really mean. Then you guys will be friends, because everyone likes reading nice stuff about them. Yeah, that could work. Hey, do you have some paper I could use for it? Julia looks at the ground sheepishly. Actually, I used up the last of my stationary stuff writing this note to Ren about my dream last night. I'm sorry. Ah, don't worry about it. I'm sure I can find some on the ship. Uh, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure someone has some extra papers or something. And everyone's really cool, so they'll let you use it if you ask nicely and all. Julia pauses. But you'll also have to find a way to give it to Ren. Since you guys don't really seem to be friends yet, she probably won't let you into her office. Her office is super important to her. She doesn't just let anyone in there, you know? Hmm. So I have to figure out a way inside, too. But that's okay. You're smart, so I know you can do it. Operation Earn Rent Respect is a go! Yeah, okay. I literally don't think I can fail with a kid on my team. Oh. Why are they only showing up now? This sucks. This alert box blows. Queen, thank you for the gifted subs. I really appreciate it. That's so sweet. I'm not sure if I got to get to those before, so I'll get to them now. That's very kind of you. I know I saw the Prime, but I'm not sure if I saw these ones afterwards, or if they're just delayed, because this entire thing is jumbled. Chris, thank you for the follow. Now I'll do a cardio and a hydrate. One, two, three, four, five.
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Is that an ascension? Yo! Rex Bucket, later. We got bigger priorities. Bigger fish to fry right now. Hold on, let me handle that ascension real quick. I just want toast. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> I typed slash ascend. Whoops. That's another cardio? Alright, we'll do that in a second. There we go. Alright, I'll do that now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. It's another hydrate. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Rex just did his jumping jacks to the beat of my music. <laughs> oh, cool. That's wicked. <laughs> okay. We got to make this kid happy, chat. Can't let them down. So we got to befriend <sighs> Captain Ren. At least earn our respect. Cool coin, though. Okay. Uh, first, let's go see about our hand. Oh, what's the way down? I think it's this way. Yeah, it's this way. Idea, do not set the cabin on fire. Yeah, it turns out arson wasn't the good idea. I wonder what Julia is thinking watching you work out. It's my morning workout, you know? I gotta have those gains. I'm sure someone strong like Aisha and Jalen, maybe, probably do the same. Hmm... Oh, I bet it's that one room I poked my head into. Is it this one? Ooh, I think it is. As you walk into the infirmary of the ship, you're met with a strong yet pleasant fragrance. Can't quite put your finger on what it is. In fact, you're rather convinced that you've never smelled anything like it before. However, you feel your mind at ease as you take in the scene, walking forward almost entranced. Constance would stand off to the side of the room, reorganizing a couple of shelves with various bottles and rolls of medicinal gauze. As you enter, she glances towards you. Ah, uh, there you are, Rex. I'm glad you remembered to come down and see me. I'm worried you would forget. Rose reminded me. What did she? It's very nice of her, then. She waves you over to one of her cots, motioning for you to take a seat. Please, take a seat right here. I'll gather some of my remedies and herbs for your wounds. Yeah, sure. You seat yourself on the cot. That doesn't compare to your bed in the cabin. It is rather soft and mildly comfortable beneath you. You straighten your back, rubbing your seaweed-wrapped hand nervously. You've never been treated for a cut by a pirate. Pirates take health insurance? Constance approaches you once more, setting a couple of strange items to her left as she kneels in front of you, holding her hand out to take yours. May I see your hands, please? Yeah, sure. You place your hand into her grip. She carefully looks over the seaweed wrap and smiles. <laughs> you did a good job wrapping the seaweed around your wound. Seaweed can have many medicinal properties, and you may have saved yourself the hassle of an infection. Hey, way to go me! Way to go indeed. <laughs> she slowly begins to unwrap the seaweed to observe your cut. You're also lucky this isn't a deep cut. We should be able to fix you up in a jiffy. Yeah, yeah, you have some better bandages and like a Tylenol or something? Constance pauses. Tylenol? Is that some sort of dread term for healing magic? Never mind. Wait, wait, did you say healing magic? Of course. How did you think I'd be able to heal your hands so quickly? She begins to reach for some of the bottles that she brought w over with her. She opens one of them and pours the contents into a mortar and pestle. It would come out of the bottle like some sort of paste. Wait, so this world has fire magic and healing magic. I can't say I've ever heard of a dread that doesn't know about magic. Your kind's usually quite adept in such practices. She adds some strange, off-colored leaves to the pestle, beginning to mash it all together within the mortar and pestle. Wait, so I could have magic too? Technically, anyone could have magic if they so desired. At least, that's what I was taught. She observes the pace carefully before nodding to herself, reaching into a pocket on her dress and withdrawing some gloves. She puts the gloves on and then dips her fingers into the resulting paste carefully before turning to look at your injured palm. This is going to sting for a moment, all right? What is that stuff? A special botanical concoction. 
I use it to help heal minor injuries such as cuts, bruises, or uh, burns. Now hold still, okay? She begins to run the paste over your wound. A numbing sting shoots through your hand and your fingers can't help but flinch. But eventually, the feeling fades. You look down at your palm in interest, and your eyes widen in amazement as you watch the paste absorb into your flesh, and your skin seals itself over the wound once more, as if it had never happened. Oh my god! But that's amazing! I can't even see it anymore! Constance giggles a bit at your reaction. <laughs> Are you feeling any more pain or discomfort, Rex? No, I... I, I can't feel a thing. I mean, I, I, I feel, but not like pain. Then I'm glad that my remedy did as it was supposed to. Constance would stand up, beginning to clear the area. After all, you can't get anything done with an injured hand, right? Hmm. Rose said the same thing. Constance would continue to put her bottles and equipment away, placing them back where they belong in the shelves scattered around the infirmary. She hums like... <clears throat> Whoa. Caught a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> that was so strange. <laughs> she hums lightly to herself as she works. Still, you can't help but stare at your healed palm in awe. Where did you learn magic? Well, many people learn magic in many different ways. I'm certain that however I learned is probably quite different from how others might learn. For example, my study of magic was focused on the creation of ointments and similar remedies from natural ingredients. However, magic can display itself in several other ways as well. Uh, for example, before Constance can finish, the door to the infirmary would swing open and Aisha would enter with a frown. Aisha? Oh dear, what did you do to yourself this time? Wait, th this time? How exactly common is this? One of my teeth is outside of me. Aisha, are you serious? This is the third time this sort of thing has happened and it's only Tuesday! It's not like it's my fault. It's almost always your fault! Ah, <sighs> I'm so sorry, Rex. I have to tend to this immediately. Perhaps we can talk about magic another time? Yeah, that's fine. I have work to do on the deck anyways. You stand, beginning to leave the infirmary so that Constance may tend to Aisha herself. However, you pause at the door, glancing back toward the two. Wait, actually, do you know where I could get paper ink or, so or ink or something? Constance looks up from her work with Aisha. Hmm? Why do you ask? Uh, I'm trying to write a letter. So you're looking for someone that might have stationery? Constance considers your question. Hmm. Well, if I'm not mistaken, Alice has a lot of it. But I'm not sure why. Perhaps you could ask her when you see her next. Alice? Huh. I may actually have an idea why. Thanks. I just put two and two together in my head. I've got an idea. I am absolutely genius, devious, despicable, even. I just gotta... Where would she be? Hmm. I guess we just run around until we see her. I don't see her around. Maybe she's up here? No, she's down in the lobby. How about the deck? Oh, looks like they cleaned it off. Aha! Here we go. This! This is what we wanted. Oh, you guys are so sweet, actually. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that in chat. Thank you. The fiery young woman would grumble to herself outside of Ren's office. The doors of the office are closed, and the windows are tinted with soot and ash. Alice has a rag in her hand, and she polishes the windows, trying to clean off the glass of any imperfections from the previous day's activities. You can swear that when you approach her, her eyes would flick toward you, glowering in your direction, and she wouldn't make any moves to acknowledge your presence. So... Alice... She gives an audible sigh as you address her. Don't you have some other mess to clean up? What are you doing over here? I see the office is still... in rough shape. How'd you guess that one? Did you use your genius detective skills? Or maybe you're psychic? <laughs> if you know it's good for you, you'll quit bothering me. Unless you want another flaming fist to the face. Well, now that you mention it. She raises her fist without hesitation. Her eyes gain a mild orange glow. No, 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 not that. I mean, how did you do that stuff? The, the fire magic. She stares at you for a moment, slowly lowering her fist. 
And why exactly should I tell you that, huh? Well, I mean, since dreads are so good with magic, I wouldn't mind learning how to punch fire. Her face would contort at your statement as she tries to hold back laughter, before eventually just losing it, cackling. <laughs> oh, oh, that's rich. You want to learn my magic? <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, get real. She stops laughing, grinning at you with her arms crossed. It took me years to get where I am now. And you really think it's something you could just learn? I didn't know you were so comedic. Wait, it took you years to learn how to punch? Her amused expression would morph into utter rage as she just glares at you. you keep making comments like that and you'll be telling jokes from the grave. Alright, alright, point made. <laughs> now, if you're done bothering me, I have work to do. Maybe you should do the same. Or better yet, go back to your cell and stay out of my way. Alice turns back to the ashen windows, grabbing the rag again and aggressively using it to scrub away the dust and grime. Well, actually, there's another reason as to why I'm here, too. She groans. Ugh, for unity's sake, what? I heard that you had a lot of stationery. I was wondering if I could borrow some. She pauses. <laughs> stationery? What? Me? No, 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 wrong person. Where the heck did you even hear about something like that? Constance said you had plenty. Yep, well, Constance doesn't know what she's talking about. Obviously. She looks back at you. But besides, what do you even need stationery for? I need a book and some ink to write with. All right. Let's say I did have this stationery. Why would I help you? You are unironically the most annoying person on this ship. Possibly the most annoying person I've ever met. Well, what if I told you I stumbled upon some of your writing? What? She snaps in your direction, dropping the rag entirely, turning a bit red at the statement. You read my journal? How did- What? Why you- She growls, storming forward to take you by the collar. All right, listen here, you little brat. Hang on. I won't tell anyone what I read if you give me the stationery. Deal? Her jaw tightens slowly, and she stares into your eyes with absolute loathing. What are you even going to do with it? What are you trying to write? I am going to write, Ren. A letter. A what now? She blinks in shock. Hang on. You want to write, Ren, a letter. <laughs> That's probably even funnier than you learning fire magic. Are you even listening to yourself? Or are you that, you're used to how stupid you sound? Why would you willingly subject yourself to that? I want to gain Ren's respect. That's all. Her respect, huh? She steps back, putting a firm hand on your shoulder. Let me tell you something, Rex. A woman like Ren, she only respects people who are strong. Like me. And you? You're not that. How? I'm just telling you the truth. You're not strong in the slightest. It's a miracle that Rose and Ren even saw some kind of use in you. You can't even do anything. Well, so she respects people like you. Who sit around in their room, writing, Okay! Oh, okay! <gasps> Fine then! You know what? She pushes past you. Follow me. I'll get you the stationery you want. But I'm telling you, this little plan of yours isn't going to work. And when it doesn't, I'll be there to watch and tell you I told you so. Really appreciate the optimism. Ah, at least that plan worked. <laughs> I'm feeling so despicable. <laughs> I thought it's all such a great writer. I'm eager to see what she writes next. <laughs> well, I don't. <laughs> well, the content. There's nothing wrong with the content. It's just the, 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 the her her writing style definitely does need to be improved a bit. <laughs> the strong man said to the equally strong man. <laughs> hmm. Wait, which room was it again? It's this one. Yep, nailed it. I follow Ellis into her room, the cabin across from yours. That explains the shouting last night about the missing furniture legs. All right, let's just get this over with. Touch anything and I roast you alive. Got it? Got it. You walk inside behind Ellis, who would immediately rush to the left side of the room. You only assume that side belongs to her. Just as your mind begins to ponder on who owns the right side, you notice a splotch of pink in your peripheral vision. 
You glance in that direction and almost jump at the sight of Lorelai, who'd be sitting at her own desk, casually with some bread in her hand. Her eyes light up and she grins, waving. Oh, hey, Ellis. Hey, Rex. Lorelai? You share a room with Ellis? Sure do. <laughs> she laughs before looking between you and Ellis. You guys look like you're getting along. Not even close. Ellis immediately corrects her. It's complicated? Oh, that makes more sense. I mean, I was surprised when I saw you walk in with Ella, so I was just like, hey, maybe they have something common and actually like hanging out. She shrugs. But no. Oh, well. We don't really have anything in common at all. So then what are you guys doing in here? Or what are you doing in here, Rex? I'm just getting the idiot some papers so he can go. That's it. Aw, you're lending him your stationery? That's so sweet. It is not. <laughs> And if the, uh, hang on, Ellis pauses. How did you know that I had stationery? I didn't tell you I had any. I never showed it, I gave it to you. Her face looks up as if she just had an epiphany. You weren't even the one who told Rex about it. Constance was. Have you been the one telling people I have this? I mean, just a couple. Lorelai looks at the ceiling awkwardly. You know, like Constance, or Rose, or Jalen. I can't believe this. I literally have no friends on this ship, Ellis laments, slamming a door shut at her desk and beginning to pace with the stationery in hand. Okay, well, it's not that bad. So, Rex, what do you want to use the stationery for? Lorelai asks as Ellis offers you the stationery, shoving it into your arms. Oh, I wanted to write Ren a letter. Getting the materials was step one. Ooh, and what's step two? Figuring it out how to get it to her. Yeah, I can see how that might be difficult. After all, she kind of doesn't like you right now. Wait, I don't think I was supposed to tell you that to your face, huh? No, I already knew that one. She's been pretty obvious about it. Hmm, well, last I heard, Ren is super busy right now, but you might be able to find a way to give her the letter by talking to Serena. Serena's doing your weekly inventory check in the vault right now, so maybe if you chat with her, she'll let you slip your letter into her reports. After all, she's allowed to go into Ren's office pretty much whenever to drop off documents for Ren to look over and stuff like that. Serena, huh? Lorelai, you did not just tell a random stranger that our vault is unlocked right now! Ellis groans. Aw, come on! He's harmless! Hey! If you really want to go through with this letter thing, just go and try talking to Serena. She's pretty reasonable, so I'm sure she'll have a solution for you regardless. And remember that if you fail, no one will be surprised. Ellis rolls her eyes. Wow. Thanks. And thank you for your help, Lorelai. <sighs> Love the vote of confidence. All right, well, before we get there, how about we write this letter? <sighs> oh, this is going to take a sec. And done. That actually did not take long at all. Wow. I mean, it was kind of hard. But I think I thought of some good stuff to write. <sighs> Alright, now we just need to get it to her. I don't remember it being this way. I don't think this way. Maybe it's this way? Perfect start to a letter. One. Yeah, bullet points. You know what I mean? A, a tiered list. Let's see. Whoa. You peek into the vault hesitantly your eyes locking on the rarities and treasures scattered about the room. There are piles of gold and treasure chests overflowing with coins. Gemstones glitter in the candlelight. The sight is unlike anything you've ever seen, and you find yourself mesmerized by the riches before you. Holy treasure vault! You walk over to touch some of the gold coins that are scattered around the floor when a voice sounds from the other end of the room. Please don't touch anything. It shall disrupt my calculations. Ah! You quickly glance in the direction of the voice and find Serena standing in the room, a clipboard in one hand and a quill in the other. She would not be looking at you, adjusting a monocle over her left eye as she gazes at an immaculate gemstone on a pedestal. Hmm. She considers its edges meticulously before jotting down a number of some kind onto her clipboard. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see you there. You're Serena, right? Hmm. Her response is plain and simple as she would finish taking her notes removing the monocle from her face to now, finally, glance in your direction. Yes, that's me, and you are Ren's rarest commodity. 
or you could call me Rex. I'm aware of your name, however, whatever you call yourself doesn't concern me. She walks over to a different pedestal, picking up some sort of ring, holding it between the two of you. If you were to buy this ring, would you ask for its title? Or would you simply purchase it based on its appearance and uniqueness? Okay, I, I, I get what you're saying, but I'm a whole guy. I, I'm, I'm not a ring. Everything may be a commodity in some regard, and that commodity's worth is built on its scarcity. Built on its scarcity. She sits down the ring. That's my job among the sirens. I'm the one who places this worth on various items of interest in Ren's possession. In other words, I handle appraisals. <laughs> so I even put a price on my head? Yes, I did. Wait, wait, what? The moment we managed to pull you up from the bottom of the ocean, your role among Ren's collection was set in stone. Therefore, I took it upon myself to calculate how much it would cost. She looks down at your her clipboard. I took everything into account while creating this price. Height, weight, physical build, facial structure. What did you do any of that? While well, you were unconscious for about a week. In fact, I would gamble I know you the best out of anyone on this ship. Well, that's not something to brag about! She stares at you for some time before sighing, lifting her clipboard up to her face and making a small note on the paper with her quill. Deduction. Dramatic. Are you still calculating my price? Why exactly did you come into the vault, Rex? She changes the subject entirely in an instant. Serena sets the clipboard down to look back up at you, her head tilted upwards. She gives off a mild air of superiority with her very gaze. As you can see, I'm already rather busy counting the contents of this vault, and I'd prefer not to drop your worth any further. However, you will give me little choice if you continue to distract me. Actually, I'm here to talk to you about this weekly vault count thing. Ask quickly, I have many more numbers to crunch. I was just wondering if I could help you bring those reports to Ren. She considers your offer. What's your price? What, my price? Surely you have to have some caveat included in your offer. It would be foolish to volunteer yourself as free labor without having any price in mind for your efforts. <sighs> well, not everything is in transaction, you know. <laughs> she glances back at you. I suppose, if you have no further terms to your deal. However, the documents are far from finished right now. Well, what do you mean? I still need to finish the total calculations of the vault, as well as finish appraising a couple of our most val ain't recent relics. She would walk over to you, a glint in her eyes. How about this? If you can help me finish calculating the total appraisals within the vault, I'll allow you to bring the reports to Ren yourself. No questions asked. Is it a deal? You got a deal. Wonderful. She would hand you her clipboard. Attached to this clipboard, you will find a notepad which will give you further insight on the worth of an item based on its different features and additions. And additions. I want you to identify the prices of the items on these pedestals, and then give me their sum. Is that clear? Yeah, I think so. Once you've finished this, return to me so that I may check up on your work. Hmm. Okay. That's a lot of stuff. It's a great many things. So there's some kind of amulet. A dagger. A really, really cool apple. Good question. What is this stream schedule for Ren? Uh, unknown right now. There's, for the first, if you go to the Twitter, you can see there will be like weekly schedule posts that kind of give you schedule dates for like when people's premieres and stuff like that happen. Uh, it's pretty much like the full calendar and it's going to be released every week. So if you go to the Twitter now, you can see what the rest of the streams are lined up for this week. There's at least a stream a day. And by at least, I mean, there just is a stream a day. So, yeah. And what's this? Some kind of staff thing. All right, looks like we've got glowing jeweled animate, rusty gold dagger, unknown glowing staff, and enchanted apple. We gotta tabulate the price and then the total price of everything. And this is her notes. Oh boy. You look over the pages of the book. It's quite hefty with a leather cover and a ribbon bookmark attached to the spine. You flip through some of the pages and notice a couple of notes on how to appraise certain artifacts. Artifact type jewelry, price range between 25 to 30 gold pieces notes inclusion of gemstones increases price by 10 pieces generally enchantments increase price by 15 pieces 
artifact type weapons. Price range between 10 to 15 gold pieces. Notes and enchantments increase price by about 10 pieces. Just usability increases price by about 10 pieces. Magical weaponry increases price by... And that's cut off. Oh, that is a horrible thing to have cut off. <laughs> that is an act of detriment. All right, you know what? We ball. Artifact type, miscellaneous. Price range between 5 to 10 to 8 gold pieces. Notes, enchantment increases price by 5 gold pieces. 15. Thank you, Backstage. Magical weapon increases price by 15 pieces. Let's try to remember that. Can you remember that for me? Chat in my head, 15 pieces. All right, you, you guys got this. You look over the pages. There should be enough information to appraise the four artifacts on this pedestals, at least. You pause, noticing a page further into the book. This page would talk about you. It looks like everything on this page details the notes that Serena took to evaluate your price point. Curiosity gets the better of you, and you look over what she wrote. On the pages, Serena has detailed your height and weight, and has classified you as a dread, just like Carrie told you. Additionally, being a dread incre increased your price significantly. However, a couple of smaller, handwritten notes also catch your eye near the bottom of the page. Race, dread, type, demonic, magical prowess, unknown. We'll have to reevaluate later. Magic reading equipment faulty. We require replacement and further investigation. Huh. That sucks. I guess they don't have a perfect price for me. Well, I guess that doesn't suck for me. Can I say I wasn't curious, though? Hmm. Amulet. Dagger. Weird stick. Appel. Hmm. Okay. Let's start tabulating. Let's start with the amulet. So the amulet is probably going to be the jewelry artifact type, which means its base price is going to be twenty between 25 to 30. So somewhere in that range. And then... It says it's jeweled, so I guess that means it has gemstones? Whoops. <laughs> Let's put that book back. <laughs> Let's see. Um... <laughs> jewelry. 10 pieces. If it has gemstones. <laughs> Enchantments. Increased price by about 15 pieces. Okay. Is that enchanted? Oh, screw it, I guess it is. So 25 to 30 plus 10 plus 15. Next 25. If it's 25 and 25, it could be 50. So that'll be the price for that. For the dagger. 10 to 15 pieces. Champs increase price by 10 pieces. Usability increases price by 10 pieces. Equipment increases price by 15. So that's easy that's like 10 10 10 15 hmm i mean it's rusty so it probably isn't usable so maybe we can drop that one okay let's try 10 10 10 15 minus one of the tens so then it would be 35 maybe yeah we'll go with that I think it's 35. Apple. Probably falls underneath miscellaneous. 5 to 8. Increases price by 5. So um, maybe we can get away with making this one an even 10. And then... Some weird stick. Now here's the question. Is this a weapon? <laughs> Could you use it as a weapon? I would say, yeah. I think you can hit someone over the head with it. Queen! What's up, Queen? I think the answer is yes. It probably is a weapon, yeah. 15. Enchantments by 10. Hmm. I think it can be used. So I think it's similar to what I wanted for the dagger, maybe? Except we actually add the extra 10, so then this becomes 45. So then the total would be 
140. Wait, brain math. Brain math burr. 105 plus 35. 40. 50. 150. <laughs> uh, math! Oh no! I'm the bane of my existence. Hold on, let's try so The 35 and the 45 will make 80. Plus the 50 makes 130. It's 140. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> we did it. It's 140. All right, let's see. Is th does this look great? Serene would be observing some different goods, taking a number of coins out of one of the small chests and counting them quietly to herself. When you approach, she gives you an indifferent glance. Have you completed your calculations? Take a look. She looks over your results. Mm, perhaps you should double check your findings. These numbers do not seem quite right. Uh, sure, I'll go double check. Take it. Wait, do we suck at math that much? Hold on. What did I mess up? Right? This was... There's 25 base price. 10 and the 15 because of the gemstones. Enchantment. Yeah, this, 10, 10, 10, 15. Maybe, is this usable? The dagger, you think? Dagger and stuff not enchanted, maybe? They look pretty magical to me. And everything in here looks magical. Is this still usable? Because we knocked off 10 for probably not being usable, but it could still be usable. I mean, it's just rusty, right? Staff is an enchanted. Ooh, you're right. That staff is not enchanted. Okay. Come on. So let's knock off. So the staff, we reduce 15. Yeah. So that goes down to 30. And then the dagger. Is it usable? I knocked off 15, that brings us down to 125. If Apple's not enchanted, it wouldn't be 10. I think this is right, right? This has to be right? What do we think? I'll do hydrate, sure. Come on, chat. We think this is right. All right, let's, let, let's ball with this. I think this is right. Let's try this. Serene would be observing some different goods, taking a number of coins out of one of the small chests and counting them quietly to herself. When you approach, she gives you an indifferent glance. Have you completed your calculations? Take a look. She looks over your results. Hmm, perhaps you should double check your findings. These numbers do not seem quite right. All right, yeah, I bet the dagger's usable. All right, let's make the dagger usable. So that brings it up to 45. Brings the total price up to 135. And then that should be solid. And five and eight, that would be 10. I mean, this is right, right? This is it? What do we think? Oh, let's try this. So you're gonna be observing some different goods, taking a number of coins out of one of the small chests and counting them quietly to herself. When you approach, she gives you an indifferent glance. Have you completed your calculations? Please. Come on! This sucks. That's not enchanted. It is usable. Right? Hold on. Amulet. Or, sorry, this. Ten. No enchantment. It's usable. 20. 35. Maybe that. That, 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 yeah, that's what I had wrong, I guess. 140. Enchanted apple. 5 and 5. It's 10. Dagger. Ten, ten, 
15, 10, 30, 45. Forty-five. I'm so confused. Magic none? It's literally glowing. It has to be magic. Chilled amulet fifty. Hmm. Wrong one. This one. 25, 35, 40, 50. Then glowing staff. <sighs> I don't know. Neville's price is 13. I doubt it. I doubt it. Look. It's 5 to 8. So this should technically be right. Just being 10. Is the dagger 30? Ugh. And I guess if it didn't make it usable, it's magic. It's glowing. So this has got 10, and it's got 15, right? Or does it not count? Are enchantments and magic different? Oh, God, okay. Maybe 10, 10, 10, 30. You might, yeah, you think you might be right there. Staff ten ten no ten ten fifteen thirty five because it's, it's not enchanted that it's glowing so I guess it's magic yeah so we had that right enchanted apple is ten we know that one and glowing jeweled and amulet just has to have it all. 25, 10, 15. Yeah, th th this has got to be it. Th this has got to be it. Now we just got to add it up. 50, 110. That's 80. What's wrong with me? 90, 125. Did I do that math right? Dagger's 25. Not dagger's 35. I bet it is. Now this is it. Serena would be observing some different goods, taking a number of coins out of one of the small chests and counting them quietly to herself. When you approach, she gives you a different glance. Have you completed your calculations? Please be right. She looks over your results. Yes, this all seems correct. I suppose congratulations are in order, hmm? She glances at you and then takes another note on the clipboard. Addition, capable of mathematical labor. Please stop doing that. Your findings should conclude my report on the state of the treasury. Here, this should be all the documents that are that should be delivered to Ren's office. Do not lose them and ensure they are handed to Ren directly as soon as possible. She brushes herself off. Now then, if that will be all, I have work to do elsewhere. Well, have fun with that, I guess. And Rex... If those papers do not make it to Ren's office, your worth shall be decreasing exponentially. <laughs> Threat received. Think at least. Oh, I hope that's the most math I end up having to do as well. It's a report. I give the pages a slight glance. So this is Serena's report to Ren, huh? Just looks like a ton of numbers to you. Can't really make sense of everything Serena was trying to calculate. Some values to have some large red circles around them. 
Ooh, yeah, I this is a ledger that I cannot decipher. All right, we'll just press on then. I'm, uh, yes, thank you for following. Now we just gotta go up, we bring that to her. We slip in our little well-detailed letter. And then, this is gonna work. We will have succeeded. And that will be another tally in the- Why am I walking this way? I just did a lap. There'll be another tally in the Rex doublest. Don't wreck a bowl of mathematical labor on his notes. <laughs> Let's see. Okie dokie. Is this it? Do we think this is it? I'm gonna crack my knucks to prepare myself. We aren't missing anything, right? We've got one book, two book. Okay. There she is. All right, let's do this. You enter Ren's room hesitantly. Serena's documents in your arms. You gulp, each step becoming a smaller and smaller stride as you approach Ren's desk. Ren herself sits behind the desk, trying to sift through damaged papers and folders in search of something legible. Burnt, burnt, burnt. What even was this supposed to be? She puts a hand on her brow in frustration. <clears throat> She glances up at you as you clear your throat to get her attention. Ren can't help but raise an eyebrow at your presence. Huh. Of all the people to enter my office, I didn't think one of them was going to be you. I just came here to drop off some documents from Serena. Oh, really? So what, you're her runner now? She leans back in her chair, waving you over. All right, then. Bring them here. Offer Ren the documents. You hand all the documents to Ren calmly. She takes them without a second glance. Thanks, I'll read this later. She sets it all aside, continuing her previous shuffling about the materials on her desk. You blink, trying to think of what to say in response. You sure you don't want to read it now? I have plenty of other matters to attend to at the moment. The weekly vault count can wait until the rest of my priorities have been dealt with. I really think you should read it now. And maybe just look at them? You don't tell me what to do, Rex. She shoots you a glare. What gave you the gall to think otherwise? I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just strongly recommending. She holds her gaze for some time before eventually glancing back at the small pile of documents you gave her. She would lean over, sliding the pile in front of her and flipping through the different pages. Eventually, she manages to find your letter, withdrawing it from the pile and holding it up. What is this? It's- did you write me some kind of love letter? What? The, 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 no! She stares at the letter, and then at you. That's really weird, man. I don't even like you, and you're standing here writing me little pen pal letters? You realize how strange that sounds? It's just- have I not made our relationship clear yet? You're nothing to me. You're a commodity that I am going to sell. You're nothing but a means to an end. A way for me to get rich quick. She tosses the letter aside before leaning back in her chair, arms crossed. I'm not reading that. Wait, wait seriously? You're just going to throw it away? If you didn't want me to throw it away, then you wouldn't have wasted my time with pointless junk. Now go do something else with your time while you still have some on this ship. <sighs> Fine. Whatever. Dang, man. Thought that would work. I was so sure. Ah. Crap. Oh. You leave the office. A clearly dejected expression on your face as you close the door behind you. A familiar teasing voice sounds from your right. Wow. Let me guess. Didn't work out. <sighs> you look to the right immediately and stare at Ellis in irritation. She would have a very telling grin on her face as she leans against the walls of the stairs leaning up towards the helm, her arms folded over across her chest. 
Yeah, look at that face. Someone didn't get their way, did they? Were you seriously waiting there for me to leave? I told you, when this entire thing blows up in your face, I'll be there to tell you, I told you so, and rub it in your face. She straightens up, walking over to you. If only someone warned you that that useless little and devil of yours was used to doom to fail. Oh wait, someone did, and that was me. All right, I get it. A letter wasn't the best idea. What do you want from me, huh? Oh, I'm just watching you all in your own self-pity is enough for me. I'm feeling better already, she states, putting her hands behind her head. So what now, huh? Gonna throw in the towel or what? Yeah, fat chance. You storm past Alice, much to her surprise. But wait, you're not seriously gonna keep trying? It's pointless, idiot! Can't hear you! Too busy earning Ren's respect! I'll show you! Or something. Alright. We gotta come up with a backup strategy. Another plan. That's gonna be hard. So, writing a letter didn't work. Maybe we need Julia. Let's go find Julia. She is our, 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 our method here. Thank you for the hydrate. All right, we just gotta, we gotta, we gotta regroup. We gotta rally. We gotta come up with something else. And oh my god, wait, that sucked though. That was so humiliating, dude. <sighs> that sucks. That just sucks. What's my room again? And that one. Hi, Julia. You enter your room once more and find Julia, drawing a couple of pictures on the ground. She would be sprawled across the floor, kicking her legs up and down as she works. There's a piece of charcoal in her hand she's using to, that she's using to draw with, the messy black residue now covering the paper in her hands. When you enter, she looks up at you expectantly. Hey, you're back! How'd it go? Ugh. You flop down your bed hopelessly, face down on the pillow. Julia sits up, watching you throw yourself onto the mattress dramatically. Uh-oh. That doesn't look like a happy belly flop at all. It didn't work. She still hates me. Maybe even more now. What? How come? Letters have always worked when I wrote them to Ren. It's probably because you're a kid and I'm a... Me. Well, what exactly happened? Maybe Ren was just joking around or something. You don't know. I think I do. She threw the letter away without even reading it. What? That's so fair! The child stamps her foot defiantly. Ren never threw away one of my letters! She pauses. This may be worse than I thought. Instead of making you guys friends, you guys just became even bigger enemies! Operation Ren's, Ren's respect was died before he even started. Hey, don't talk like that, Julia says, climbing up onto your bed and placing your hands on your back to shake you aggressively. If we give up, then you'll definitely never earn our respect. If there's one thing that Ren doesn't like, it's people giving up. I don't want to give up, Julia. I just don't want to move forward from here. Maybe we got to think outside the box. If the letter didn't work, then maybe we could try and give Ren something else that could help you earn respect. Something she likes even more than letters. Well, like what? She doesn't seem to like anything except for herself. Anything except for herself, huh? Julia considers her words, putting her hand to her chin, trying to mimic a contemplative look, as if she's attempting to deduce the answer in her mind. Soon enough, her eyes shine with an idea. Oh, oh, I got it! Oh, yeah? Julia kneels down on the ground, reaching for the charcoal drawing she was previously working on. Look at this! She holds it in front of you so that you can see. It's rather crudely done, but you weren't necessarily expecting anything better from a child her age. Uh, it's nice enough, I guess. It's supposed to be a dog or something? The child's expression instantly drops. No, it's me. Oh! I was just remembering a time when I drew a picture of Ren that was sort of like this one. I used some of the extra charcoal I found on their ship, and I worked really hard on it, and then I gave it to her. She said that it really captured her greatness on the paper, and she put it up on a wall for a really long time. Eventually, she took it down, but after she did, she put it in her personal drawer in her office so she'd never lose it. We're still talking about the same Ren, right? Maybe if you say that Ren likes herself, 
to so much and she didn't want to read a letter about what you like about her that you could try to draw her like I did. Hmm. And I don't think I could draw some kid's stick figure, but I think it definitely could stroke her ego. Exactly! But you have to find the right supplies first. Well, I can't just use your charcoal there? No way! This is all the charcoal I have! And I don't want you to break it or something. Charcoal's really hard to draw with, you know? Plus, you didn't like my drawing and said I looked like a dog. Look at This is my hat! And then here's my head and my really big pirate sword. I, I, I mean, I, I could see that now. You're lying! I can tell! I'm doing the thing that Alice always does when I show her my art. <laughs> she pouts, crossing her arms for a moment before continuing. I'm sure there are some other supplies around the ship. Maybe you could go and ask around to find them. Yeah, all right then. See what I can do. Mm. Who would I ask? Who could I even talk to? Maybe someone that sees everything? Maybe I'll find Lorelai. She's last in her room, but probably not in there anymore. Hmm. And she works on the mast, right? Like, she's the rigger. So maybe she's pulling some ropes out here? Mm, maybe on the back of the ship. Up here? No. No. Where the heck is Lorelai? Oh! I guess Diane came down again. As you wander up to the deck, you notice Diane would be descending from the crow's nest, brushing herself off. She doesn't seem to notice you as she heaves a sigh and looks towards the horizon, lost in thought. Hey, Diane, right? She glances in your direction and gives you a small wave. Oh, good day to you, Rex. Come on, quite the lovely weather we're having, wouldn't you agree? It's all the more cool and clear up above, believe me, you, me. Uh, did you need anything? Uh, I just had a question about something. I can't promise I'll have an answer, but I'll do my best. Yeah, do you know where I can get art supplies? Like quills or brushes or paints or something like that? Oh, blimey. Can't say I expected a question like that. <clears throat> she pauses, considering your question for a moment. You mind me asking why you would have to such things to begin with? Nothing against you, of course, but I haven't exactly pegged you to be the artistic type. Of course, looks may be deceiving. Yeah, I want to try to make something for Ren, so it's kind of important. For Ren? She raises an eyebrow. Can't say I've ever heard of a prisoner painting a picture for their warden. You're quite tricky, aren't you, mate? Well, it's nothing like that. I just want her to respect me, that's all. Well, if it's respect you're after, then you're in for quite the proper challenge. I'll be gobsmacked if a simple painting manages to earn anything from Ren besides some strange looks. Sight or supplies on board are rather limited due to... She stops herself, going rather pale and putting a hand over her mouth. Oh dear, I believe I've said a bit too much, haven't I? Wait, what? So you do have supplies on board? Well, perhaps we do or perhaps we do not. It's not my place to say more on the matter, really. Now, if you'll excuse me, cheers, Rex. Diane quickly tries to retreat from the conversation. Whoa, 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 hey, wait a second! I want to know more about these supplies! No, I've said more than I already should have! Oh, Diane, look at what you've done! It's all gone pear-shaped now! Stop right there! You jog forward, skidding in front of Diane to stop her in her tracks. She gives a small ah! of alarm, putting a ginger hand over her mouth and fumbling with her words. Rex, you're putting me in quite the precarious situation. I realize I may have given you hope that there was a solution to your conundrum, but please just disregard what I said. I really shouldn't tell you any more than I already have, or else I'll be coming nothing but a, a curtain twitcher like Lorelai. A curtain twitcher? Uh, come on, please. I'm afraid my lips are quite sealed. You sigh, standing rather still for quite some time before the confused and bewildered Diane. Without raising her head to look her in the eyes, you speak plainly one thing. Don't say I didn't warn you of what's to come next, you mutter. You can hear her intake a breath as if she's preparing for you to attack her. However, you simply clasp your hands together, bringing them up to your chest and lifting your head, widening your glistening eyes to give her the biggest puppy dog expression you've ever managed to achieve. Please. She would stare at you, her expression a mixture of disturbed horror and utter confusion. You both remain rather frozen in these poses for what feels like an eternity, before Diane would groan, rubbing her forehead. 
All right, all right. I to get your knickers in a twist. Fine. I'll talk, but first you have to stop making that face. It's quite horrifying. Yeah, fair enough. You straighten yourself up, returning your expression to one of pure indifference. Diane would sigh. <sighs> Listen closely, and do not speak a word of what I'm about to tell you to anyone, all right? Some time ago, I was up rather late in the crow's nest, keeping a careful watch over the seas while everyone else slept below. However, a glow caught my eye. It lighted up a little lantern shining on the deck. I crept over to the edge of the crow's nest to find the source of light, and that's when I saw Rose. She had the canvas in front of her, and she was painting the moon reflecting off the ocean waters. I used my spyglass to get a closer look, and I must say it was quite the lovely painting. Absolutely bloody gorgeous, I tell you. But I chose not to say a peep to anyone about it after that night. After all, I've never heard anyone talk to Rose about a painting, and I've never heard Rose tell a soul either, for that matter. You're the first person I've ever told the story to, so you'd better not tell anyone. My lips are sealed. And you'd better keep them sealed, or I don't need some dodgy bugger running his mouth, yeah? She halts, giving you a more empathetic and pleading expression. Just don't make me regret telling you all that, Rex. Got it. Thanks for the tip, Diane. I'm gonna go find Rose. Alright, so now we ask Rose to help us out. This one's easy. This is an easy task. Then she'll just give us her stuff, then we gotta paint, and, you know, it's gonna be really easy. Super easy. And then we can, you know, give it to Ren, and she'll be like, wow, Rex, that's such cool painting. And we'll be like, yeah, Ren, really strokes your ego, doesn't it? And she'll be like, yeah, Rex, really strokes my ego. I'm gonna frame this on my cabin. Everyone's gonna see it. Everyone's gonna see, wow, Rex made this for me. He's so cool. We should all love Rex. And we'll be like, yeah, go Rex. And I'll be like, yeah. <clears throat> hey, Rose. Thank you for the hydrate. Rose would be found below deck near the bar, grabbing a couple of glasses from behind the counter and holding them up to the light. She frowns, dissatisfied, placing them on the counter in a row and separating them from the other cups. I swear, everything's always so messy back here. Hey, Rose, you got a sec? She glances up and you, at you and sighs a bit, leaning over the counter as you approach and sit on one of the stools opposite her. I thought I told you not to have any questions for me, Rex. Is there a problem? No problem. I just wanted to ask where you keep the paints. You notice her become visibly pale for a moment. <clears throat> I'm sorry? But you don't have to look so freaked out, you know. Who told you? She leans forward, her eyes darting to and fro to ensure that you're both alone. Was it Lorelai? She spilled the beans? Oh, how did she manage to find out? I'm being so careful not to say a single word about it to her. Relax. It wasn't Lorelai. Someone else has been keeping your secret. Now, it's safe with me. Right, and I'm supposed to trust you on that? I mean, you don't have many other choices, do you? Hmm. Well played. It seems even an amnesiac like you has found a way to be a thorn in my side. She pulls away, crossing her arms and standing up straight behind the counter. And what exactly did you need the painting supplies for? I want to paint something for Ren so that you'll learn to respect me. Admittedly, of all the things you could have said, I wasn't expecting that one. She narrows her eyes. You're trying to earn Ren's approval? Why? I believe she made her opinions on you quite clear when you were locked away in that prison cell. Okay, well maybe I don't want her to see me as, you know, just an object to be sold off. You'll change the Captain Ren's mind's no small feat. Additionally, someone like you is hardly in any position for that change to even be possible. She looks away, considering your answer. However, I suppose your reasoning isn't without its virtues. I'm afraid it's not merely that simple. What do you mean? I can't just give you the supplies. For starters, I'm pretty much out of paint. And, no offense, but you don't particularly look like you know what you're doing when it comes to art. Whoa, what? It takes me weeks, sometimes months, to collect what we have in the hold down below. I don't want any of it going to waste. Therefore, if this is really what you want to do with your time, then you'll have to figure out how to make your own paints to use with the ingredients we have. But my own paint? But how, how do I do that? When we go down into the hold, I want you to look for two things. Dyes for color and paint binders. A dye is going to be something natural, something that can easily have its color extracted. A binder is going to be something thick and smooth, like oil, that you can mix with the dye to bind everything together so it's ready for your canvas. Of course, there's not going to be a dye for every color, so you also have to figure out how to make the colors you think you'll be needing. You understand? Hmm. I think so. 
All right, then. Once you manage to fix some paints off your own to use, or waste, I'll give you one of my spare canvases. She walks around the bar counter to stand on the same side as you, motioning to the stairs with her head. Come on. The hold's going to be this way down below, on the last floor of the ship. Coming. Oh, so there is another level. All the way down, then. Because this can't be the hold. There's a table. Yeah, there are the stairs. Let's see. Hey! Wow. This is the underbelly of the ship? It's huge. This is the biggest room. Okay. Hmm. Now I've got to make paint. Paint. Gotta make paint. Okay, seriously, this room is freaking massive, dude. Oh my god. Okay. I guess, do we just start digging? Really? We just start, like, rifling? Hmm. Alright, well, we're just gonna find stuff. It's like, ink sacks. I need ink sacks? Maybe. Take one. What's this? Glow shroom? It's green. This is black. This is inky black. Hmm! I'm so confused. Okay. Maybe maybe glow shroom? We'll try glow shroom. Olive oil. Oh, she said we needed an oil. That'll work. Cave root? Oh, what color would this give me? Maybe a brown? Would I need a brown? Would this even turn into a dye well? Oh gosh, how do I know what will actually become a dye well? Is this some kind of fungus? Ugh, I'm terrified. Egg. Ugh, egg. No way. Tulip. Yeah, it's for orange. We could use some orange, I bet. I think. Maybe. No wart. I don't want no fungus. Hmm. No, no. Wax? This is like candle wax. I don't think I need candle wax for painting. I don't know. Yeah. Blue. Well, I need blue. For like an ocean, maybe. Oh, I also need to mix them. I also need colors that might mix in other colors. That means I should get the baselines, right? Like RGB. I'm missing red, then. We should definitely try to find some red. Because if I have red, green, and blue, technically I can make whatever, right? Is that how that works? I don't know. Not warts! I don't want warts! Maybe back here. Plant oil. Hmm, this is an oil. But we've already got olive oil, so you probably don't need it. More beeswax. Screw it, we'll take it. Maybe it'll give us a glossy sh egg. No way. That's not egg. We've already got an oil. Hmm. More olive oil. More ink sacks. I can't actually find any red. I really want nether wart? I don't know if I do. But it might be the only way of getting red.
Hmm. I'll take it if I still can't find anything else. Oh! That's red. Yeah! Yeah! Smooth. Okay. So now we've got red. We've got blue. Whatever this is. We've got orange. We've got green. We've got black. Any other colors that we could possibly need? Don't need plant oil. Let's see. Why do you put why are there eggs? Why are there eggs? Why are there eggs? Green. And then so we got our olive oil. Strange cave root, more warts. Edge. Oh, secret barrel full of olive oil. Orange tulip. Beeswax. Black dye. More wart. Black. Nothing. Cave root. Lavender! I like lavender. Let's try this. Maybe this is is enough. What do you think? Rose glances up as you approach. So, you found anything useful in the crates? Remember, you're looking for an oil-like substance called a binder, and a natural ingredient that could be used as a dye. Ooh, how about all this? Hmm. Rose looks over the items you brought before her. She nods. Not bad. All this could definitely work. Just give me a moment to fix everything together, alright? I don't want you overmixing and wasting all these perfectly good materials. You watch as Rose would mix together the binding agents and the dyes to create a spectrum of paints for you, each one in a small, ceramic cup. The colors are vibrant and enticing. She wipes her brow when she's done, and nods, admiring her handiwork. So, now what? Now? Rose would walk over to the right wall of the ship's hold. She moves a couple of crates aside, revealing a moderately sized canvas hidden behind two wood the wooden boxes. She picks up the canvas, bringing it over to you and holding it out, intending for you to take it. Now you're on your own. Art and painting isn't something that I'm willing to teach you. If you're confident in your own abilities, then you may teach yourself. Just think of the image you want to reflect onto the canvas, and let your hand do the rest. It's actually rather simple. Right. Regardless, I wish you luck in your endeavors, Rex. I'm sure you'll do adequately. I'll leave you to focus on your work now. With that, Rose departs. She glances back once more at you and, the and at the canvas before leaving the hold. Oh, and I can probably use the extra paints you made, so thanks. And now you're alone. Think of an image and let my hand do the rest? What does that even mean? Okay, I got a canvas. I just gotta paint. I gotta paint Ren. Okay. Painting Ren. You stare at the canvas for what feels like an eternity. You reconsider Ren's words and find yourself even more hopelessly confused. Never touch paints in the real world! You don't know the first thing about art or drawing. Oh, maybe this wasn't the right idea. The empty canvas before you almost seems to mock you with its blankness. You just glare at it before eventually the unending power of spite starts to kick in. <laughs> Who cares if I don't know how to paint? This is my dream, then I could just will myself to know or something. You proclaim, turning away to dip your brush into one of the paints you managed to create. You lift the brush to the canvas and close your eyes. You see Ren behind your eyelids rather vividly. Her visage even scares you for a moment before you shake the feeling off. She had a lot of green. My hair was in a long braid like this. You mutter to yourself, opening your eyes and begin it to begin the painting process. Your brush connects with the canvas and you slowly drag it down, tracing the shapes that make up the human form. You stick your tongue out, concentrating on the canvas before you allowing your hand to steady despite the swaying of the ship at sea and the waves crashing above you. You don't even allow your eyes to wander away from the canvas when you change the dominant color on your brush. 
Did your hat have a feather in it? Uh, probably. What color was it again? Anyone know? Um. Yellow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had to be yellow, right? Purple? Ah. Is it yellow or purple? Maybe I could do both? No, that won't work. It's gotta be purple. You scribble in the details, the paint's color muddling on the brush. Wait, were you supposed to wash the brush between each color? Oh well. You become entranced and lost in the process, a picture slowly forming before your eyes. All other sounds or distractions fade away, until a voice chirps in from directly behind you. What the heck is that supposed to be? Ah! You shriek, the brush flying out of your hand in shock and clattering to the ground, splatting paint across the wooden plank floor. You glance back towards the voice and find Ellis leaning down directly next to you, holding back laughter at your outburst. Can you knock next time? I just saw my life flash before my eyes. Given your amnesia, it must have been a quick trip down memory lane. She jokes, straightening up and looking back at the canvas. Don't tell me your stupid idea has evolved from a letter to a painting. So what if it did? You glare back at Ellis. If Ren's gonna be so full of herself, then I'll just give her a gift that is herself. I mean, it's the only thing that she seems to love so much. Ellis looks between you and the canvas for a moment, before snorting, slapping a hand over her mouth to stifle her cackling. What's that face mean? <laughs> no, nothing, nothing at all. She musters out, staring at the work before you. So, uh, you're telling me you're painting Ren right now? Like, like, a, like a portrait or something? Yep. <laughs> Sorry, that was slipped, slipped out. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's great. She's totally gonna love it. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, she never looked better, even. Okay, can you stop distracting me? I'm starting to feel self conscious. Self conscious? No, 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 no. It's a lovely uh, work of art. <laughs> there are practically tears in her eyes as she turns away, taking a couple of deep breaths and wiping her eyes before daring to look back at you. She waves her hand over her face, her expression changing to one of indifference. I can, uh, <laughs> can really see to like this. You got all the, uh, the, the green. I think there's a couple strokes of yellow in there. The uh, detailing's immaculate. Wait, really? I mean, I've never painted anything before, so I'm just playing it by ear. It shows. <clears throat> she quickly coughs and clears her throat, trying to hide, trying to mask her previous statement with her aggressive whooping. Ugh, I mean, uh, what a fantastic first time for something. Hmm. You stare at the canvas for some time, the details popping out at you and the image beginning to formulate before your eyes. You can't think of anything else to add. You've done it. You really can do anything in a dream. All right, now I just gotta give it to her. Oh, I gotta see this, Ellis says, keeping her hand clapped over her jaw to hide her grinning mouth. You can faintly make out her true expression past her, past her fingers. <laughs> you just think you're gonna watch me fail again. What? No. Oh, come on, the pain isn't going to deliver itself, right? She walks over the stairs and motions for you to walk up first. Ladies first. I don't like you. <laughs> Alright. Give this pain to Ren. And then... We will... Win. It's just it. We just win. You lived a good life? I love, I, 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 it's great! It's a great painting! It's a wonderful painting! It was actually painted, but like, I don't have any way of showing it on <laughs> Alrighty, we got this. She is going to freak out when she sees this. She's like, freak out so hard. She's gonna be like, wow, Rex, you can paint so well. I'm gonna be like, yeah, Ren. All right, here we go, baby. 
We walk into Ren's office once more, holding the canvas carefully so as to not smear the paint, but to also keep its contents a surprise. I lost my place. <laughs> you find Ren standing over some of her treasure that would be scattered about the table, counting up some points. Coins, I think. She mouths the number of to herself, seemingly quite focused on the task in front of her. With how serious her expression is, you find yourself pausing. Maybe this isn't the right time. Yo, Ren! Ella shouts without a single moment of hesitation. Ren jumps, dropping a couple of the coins on the ground and completely losing count of them. Slowly, her head turns towards you and Ellis, her expression of pure rage like something out of a horror movie. Why would you do that, Ellis? You'd better have a good reason for interrupting me like that, Ren says with ice behind each syllable. You feel Ellis's hands on your back as she begins to push you forward to speak with Ren yourself. <laughs> All right, Master Painter, go get her. Hey, wait a second. Entirely against your will, you find yourself standing directly before the very enraged Captain Ren, who just glares at you. What? You gulp a bit, giving her a sheepish smile before holding the canvas out to her. I made you this. She stares at you, narrowing her eyes and scowling. Didn't I tell you already how weird it is you keep making me junk? You're not my friend, so cut it out. Well, at least look at this one! Come on! She groans. Begrudgingly, she snatches the canvas out of your grip and turns it around to face her so that she may look at the art on the page. Immediately, you notice her blink in the confusion. Hmm. Never seen a monster like this before. Is your idea of a goblin or something? Oh no! I think that's supposed to be you, Captain. Ellen calls from across the room, beginning to snort and giggle. Ren's expression shifts to anger. Is it now? She slowly looks back at you angrily. I, I, I mean, I'm, 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 <laughs> I, if you're trying to say that this painting is me, then never touch a paintbrush again, Ren says to you harshly. I can't believe you distracted me for this garbage. C -c Come on! I've never painted before, and it's just the thought that counts. The thought that makes me look like a green goblin? Yes! No! I mean, like, like... Get out of my office! Both of you! She pauses. And... Rex, throw that canvas overboard before it curses the entire ship. Okay, well now you're just being overdramatic! <sighs> Man, I thought that would work! Ugh! That was so close! You and Ellis both leave the office. And immediately, Ellis burst out laughing at you. Ha ha ha! Well, that was even better than I thought it'd be. You! You distracted me, okay? That's it! I could have been- it would have been good if, if you didn't- If I didn't what, huh? If I didn't talk to you? But- YES! Have you ever- Maybe. Taken the time to consider that I wasn't the problem with the painting? Maybe you're just really bad. Okay, well, first off, ow, you're the one who's trying so hard to earn her respect. You're really just doing it yourself at this point. You goaded me into doing it. I wasn't going to miss out on the opportunity to watch you fail again. Hey, maybe that's what you're actually good at, because it sure isn't painting. That's it. I've had enough of you. You storm away from Alice, and you hear a grin and laugh behind you. A couple of clouds pass over the sun, casting you into shadow as you walk away. Right back at you. You ignore her. Looks like another one of your attempts ended in failure. You need a new strategy. <sighs> this smarts, man. Hey there, Julia. Walk over to Julia. It would now be found on the deck of the ship, flying what you can only assume is a handmade kite. She runs back and forth across the ship, the shabby pirate flag gliding behind her. <laughs> Avast, all evil guys! I'm gonna take you down and take your treasure! Looks like she's playing a game of pretend by herself. Well, uh... I come in peace? She looks at you with a grin. Vex! Did it go well? Did you give her an art thingy? Are you and Ben best friends now? Well, maybe not best friends, because I'm your guys' best friend, but you guys can just be normal friends. Ugh. Anyone ever tell you you groan a lot? She frowns, staring up at you in confusion. Wait, did the picture not work either? Is that why you're all bleh right now? 
Nothing's working! There's two ideas that blew up in my face! I don't get it. These ideas always work for me. Okay, well, I think there's a difference between a literal kid and me. Oh, you think so? She reels in her kite and holds it close to her chest, hugging it as she begins to pace back and forth. I guess I didn't think of something like that. If that's the case, what are we supposed to do? She huffs. I'm not ready to give up on this operation yet. And you'd better not be thinking of giving up either. I'm not giving up. I'm just frustrated, okay? Hmm. What are some other things that Ren likes that a bigger person could give her? She stops pacing. Maybe you could give her money. People pay Ren for all sorts of things, and sometimes it's the other way around too. Uh, I'm not exactly wealthy. Can't just bribe her to like me. Bribe? I think I've heard Ren say that word before, but... I don't know what it means. Mm. How to explain it? It's like when you give people something valuable in exchange for some kind of service. Usually a bad service. Can you explain? Does it have to be bad? Uh, I guess not. Sometimes it's just something that the other person might not want to do under normal circumstances. In that case, you would be bribing Ren to be your friend? Right. Then why don't we bribe Ren with something that isn't money? Since you don't have any of that, we could... Julie would suddenly get an idea, rushing over to you in excitement. We could bribe her with food! Food's valuable, right? Since you always need to eat food to stay healthy. Food, huh? That really work? Everyone likes food! I don't see why that would make Ren any different. Plus, she and the others are always having really crazy dinner parties with their smelly rum, sometimes more than once a week. Hmm, fair point. I could make her a favorite meal or something. Yeah, you know what they say, the way into a pirate captain's heart is through her stomach. Yeah, I don't think anyone says that. Do you know her favorite food, then? Nope! The child beams at you. What? Then how do I make it if I don't know what it is? I didn't think that far ahead, okay? This is a lot of work for me. Yeah, tell me about it. Well, do you know someone else who may know? Mm, probably want to go to someone that knows Ren super well. Someone who's been around for a while and spends lots of time with Ren, you know? Julia blinks at you innocently, as if that description is making an, is making an unpleasant implication. Why am I suddenly nervous? Mm, the main person that comes to mind is Ellis. Okay, yeah, there it is. Ellis spends the most time with Ren because she's kind of like her, uh, like her bodyguard. She's super strong and looks out for Ren whenever they're visiting a t city or a town on the coast. Apparently, Ren has enemies, so she needs Ellis to back her up a lot. Also, I heard that Ellis has been on the ship for a while. Way longer than me. <laughs> okay, yeah, but how am I supposed to talk to her? She hates me even more than Ren. Didn't I see you talking to her just a little bit ago? You guys were right over there having fun and yelling with each other. Okay, that wasn't with each other, Julia. That was at each other. Well, Alice can be scary, but she's not super mean or anything. I'm sure if you just ask nicely, she'll tell you Ren's favorite food. <sighs> Forget how optimistic children are. Good luck, Rex. Oh, and uh, if you make any extra, can you give some to me, please? I want to taste what Ren's favorite food is, too. Yeah, we'll see. If it'll get burned to a crisp first... Ugh. Okay. You. Fine, then. You begrudgingly approach Alice, who leans against one of the ship's masts. Her eyes are locked on some of the other crew members as they rush around the ship, tightening the ropes or cleaning the cannons. Every step you make towards her, you feel your stomach drop. <sighs> okay, I didn't want to come back over here, but I have a question. She glances over in your direction quickly, raising an eyebrow. I thought you had enough of me. Yeah, I have, but you're the only person I can think of who may actually know the answer to this question. You explain to her. She stares at you, unimpressed. But don't tell me you're still trying to impress Ren after failing twice. I was hoping that logic was going to kick in sooner or later, but you're really as dumb as you look. Do I really look that dumb? Just spit it out. What do you want this time, huh? I want to know Ren's favorite food. She stares at you before putting her hands behind her head, closing her eyes. 
Your favorite food, huh? Uh, pickles and peanut butter sandwich. Whole grain bread. Ellis, I'm being serious. So am I. She likes it when you cut out the middle and give her nothing but the crust. Oh, and don't forget the side of cheese for dipping. Okay, I get it. What's her actual favorite food? Fine. What about... Undercooked rice served with raw eggs and a couple of tablespoons of diced blended strawberries. But that doesn't even make sense! Hey, if you're refusing to take my answer seriously, then that's a you problem. She shrugs, straightening herself up and stretching. Now, if you're done bothering me... Okay, can't you give me an actual answer? For once! She groans, visibly irritated. Ugh, you seriously don't give up, do you? You're just dead set on making these next few days as miserable as possible. Why are you even doing any of this? Why do you care? I... You just want to try and make your own life easier on this ship? Is that it? Snuggle up to the captain and get special treatment? She glares at you, grinding her teeth together. Why can't you get it through that thick skull that nothing is working? You're obviously not making anyone's lives easier, so just throw in the towel and know when you failed. That's not how I work. What's that supposed to mean? She looks at you, absolutely baffled by your response. Look, you start. You can tell me to throw in the towel as much as you want. The fact of the matter is that I want her to respect me. So I don't care how long it takes. I don't even care if it kills me. I will find a way. So you can either stay out of my way and stop trying to find ways to make me fail, or you can just tell me what her favorite food is. Alice just blinks at you in utter shock. She wasn't expecting that response in the slightest. All right. Fine, then. I'll go ask someone else. You turn your back on Alice, beginning to walk away, still mildly fuming. However, before you manage to get too far, her own footsteps catch up to you, grabbing you by the arm and stopping you in your tracks. Fine, fine. I'll tell you, all right? <sighs> Ceviche. Okay, now I know you're messing with me. It's a real thing, moron! Her favorite food is ceviche. It's kind of difficult to explain what it is. It's sort of like a type of seafood. I never seen her, haven't seen her eat it often, but I remember when she first had it. The crew wasn't all that big at the time. It's just me, Rose, and Ren. We're staying in some small town for a bit to handle some old debt. And Ren decided to be a little adventurous and try something new. None of us expected her to fall in love with it, though. She was raving about the ceviche for days after having it. Huh. If making it's your aim now, you probably want to use our kitchen downstairs. Plenty of veggies and seasonings that you'll need. But the main problem's the seafood. Don't necessarily have a surplus on the right kind of fish. I think you'll need something like a, uh, crimson-scaled snapper, or along those lines. She pauses. And though, I've overheard that the Meridian Sea is a hot spot for special fish like that in the spring. Maybe you have a chance to catch one yourself. Well, how do I do that? Man, I don't know! That sounds like a you problem, not mine! I answered your question! I don't owe you anything else! She crosses her arms, looking away. I guess you could ask go Jalen something for a fishing rod. She'll use one sometimes to get free snacks or something like that. Hey, thanks, Alice. You're helping me for once. <laughs> don't get the wrong idea, idiot. I just... She pauses, thinking of how to respond. If you're gonna be so passionate about it, then fine. I won't stand in your way, even if I think you're a moron for going through with it. <laughs> Still. Thanks. Hey, Chris. Thanks for the raid. Welcome, raiders. Ugh. So, let's see. Jalen at the helm of the ship, then. Alrighty. I need to borrow a rod. You walk across the helm, slowly approaching Jalen and Aisha, who would be talking to one another next to the wheel of the ship. Your eyes roll down to linger on Jalen's tail for a moment, still rather fascinated by the existence of people with fuzzy ears and tails in this... REM place. But you quickly correct your gaze, getting back on track as you halt directly in front of Jalen and Aisha. <laughs> and then Constance chewed me out. Again! Aisha complains. As if it's my fault! How was I supposed to know that loading two cannonballs into a single cannon was a bad idea? Was it a bad idea? 
I lost a tooth, but the explosion was pretty cool. Hey, Jalen and Aisha. The two glance at you. Hey, I recognize you. Are you supposed to be in prison? Jalen asks, completely clueless. Uh, apparently he's part of the crew now, or something like that. Aisha shrugs. Right. I, I just had a quick favor to ask. <gasps> Is it dangerous? Aisha asks. Is it food? Jalen asks. What? No, neither. Okay, I just need to borrow a fishing rod. To catch food? Jalen specifies. Yes. Ooh, I've never had someone offer to catch fish that I can eat. What, what, no, it's not for you. Then why should I give you my rod? I want to make something for Ren. Your captain? <laughs> Jalen frowns. I know who Ren is. I'm not stupid. You resist the urge to face palm. Look, it's really important, and I need to catch a fish to make the meal. Forget it. What makes Ren's hunger more important than mine, huh? Okay, all right, look! Let's make a deal, then. Whatever fish that I get that isn't the one I want, you can have it. You barter with Jalen. That way, I still use the rod and get the fish I want, and you get... Lunch. I guess. Her eyes visibly widen and sparkle at the offer. That's like... Three free fish! Maybe even more! Jalen grins ear to ear. Alright, I guess if I'm getting free fish out of it, you can use the rod. I stored it in one of the spare boats back there, under one of the seats. It's a lot easier to keep there when, than always having to run below deck whenever I want to catch a fishy. <sighs> Thanks. I appreciate it. Don't forget our deal! I want fish too! Big ones! We'll see. Oh, okay, that was kind of painful. At least we nailed it. Said by the spare boats, right? Somewhere under here? Aha! You look around the spare boat, searching for the fishing rod that Jalen told you about. Sure enough, you find it under some of the wooden seats of the boat, alongside many small fish bones. Is that a, a, a fish skull? What exactly is Jalen doing to the fish he catches? No, I'm gonna pretend I never saw this. Alright, sick. That's a fishing rod. Now, time to fish. Hmm, it's a good spot. I guess the edge of the ship? Is there a place that isn't, like, bordered? Oh, there. This'll work. Ooh, that's a, that's a lot of water. You stand idle on the edge of the ship, staring to the blue depths beneath you. Your hook bobs up and down within the water, waiting for something to bite, but overall, nothing happens. <sighs> Who knew dream fishing would be just as normal as nor boring as normal fishing? You glance back towards the rest of the ship at the various activities of the rest of the crew. You frown, looking back towards the water. Oh, come on, fish. Give me a bite already. Is this rod broken? Oi, Rex. Naisha walks over to you, following your fishing line to look out at the ocean. How's the fishing going for you? Oh. Uh. Good. Yep, just fine. She stares at your line for some time before looking back at you. Alright, be honest with me here. Do you actually know how to fish? No. I knew it, she announces triumphantly upon hearing your answer. You're not going to catch fish with that kind of energy. Or without bait, for that matter. Well, how was I supposed to find worms on a pirate ship? It's not just worms, dummy. There's all kinds of types of bait. And it depends on the type of fish, Aisha explains. Or at least, that's what Rose said one time. She was explaining to Jalen how to properly use the fishing rod and give her some big book of bait for Jalen to study. Nice to say, Jalen didn't read the book. She pauses. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if Jalen can even read. Do you know where I can get the book? Duh, I have it on me right now. Not like Jalen was ever going to use it, right? She points at you. But, even if I did give you the book, it wouldn't do you much good. Your energy's all off! You think that the fish are going to be drawn to your hook if you're not even going to try and challenge them? What? Everyone thinks fishing is so boring, but they're all doing it wrong. You gotta stop thinking of the fish as food and start thinking of every fish as a challenge or a fight! 
She grins at you. When you throw that line out, you're inviting the creatures of the sea to test their strength against yours. Will you reel them in and eat them for dinner, or will they snap your hook in two? Okay, I, I, don't, I don't remember fishing being this violent. Looks like you're still not getting it, are you? All right, then. How about this? I'll do all the fishing for you, and you just gotta watch and learn. I'll show you how to hook those fish into submission. Our battles will be legendary! Okay, I'm not just fishing for any fish. I need a specific one. So you're searching for a particular opponent, huh? I, I guess? Don't worry. I'll help you find your fish with my own rod skills. I can never say that again. While I handle the line, you can use the book I told you about to search for the right tackle and bait that this fish wants. I mean, you can't convince it to fight you without the right components. If you can identify which tackle and bait the fish likes, I can put it on the hook and we can see what we reel in. Yeah, it seems fair enough. So hand over the rod! Aisha snatches the rod and shoves the book she mentioned into your arms. There's probably some sort of tackle and bait box below deck. Maybe in supply closet area? Go down there and find it, we can start. Right, sure thing. Tackle and bait box. Alrighty. Let's fish up some fish. Ah, this has gotta be it's gotta be one of these, right? Maybe this? Aha! Oh, that's a lot. Okay. Let's look at this. Book of Bait would indeed be quite informative. You read through several pages of fish identification notes before you even see a word about tackle and bait. Goldfin Trout. The goldfin trout is a shallow depth fish that prefers to ride along the sunny, high altitude sea currents. They're rather small, so using any strong fiber coils is unnecessary, and they prefer bug based bait. Desert Bone Snapper. This is a mid depth fish which, in, which tends to enjoy hiding in the darker crevices along sea walls. They hide in dusty stones and feed off of smaller fish. In this way, they're aggressive and require reinforced fiber coils to catch. Flying fish. These are shallow depth fish who are often seen leaping out of the water to fly alongside the ocean waves. They prefer to eat smaller insects that may linger near the ocean's surface, especially near the coasts. Enchanted moonfish. These are deeper depth fish that prefer to eat the vegetation that grows at the bottom of the ocean. Often they can be found in the open seas, and they become far easier to spot and catch at night due to their enchanting glow. Crimson Snapper Also called the Crimson Scaled Snapper, these fish prefer the deeper depths and much like most other deep depth fish, require a more fibrous hemp coil to catch. They also prefer an equally fibrous diet. Hey, sounds easy enough. So let's see, we're going to want... Probably shouldn't bring this whole thing with me. We need a fiber. Huh. So there's normal string coal, refined fiber, fibrous hemp rope, insect bait, seaweed bait, fish meat bait. <laughs> this is tricky. Maybe the refined? Does that mean the strong one? Or does this one mean the strong one? It said fiber, but that was that. I don't. Would it. How. Could it be. Okay. Chat, I need some opinions. <laughs> Help me out. Hmm. Take both. Refined. Okay. So we'll use refined. We'll try refined first then, because it's one or the other. Refined and then... Because that'll narrow it down. If it's not one of these, it's the other one. Um, It said snapper, so I'm going to guess fish meat. That seems right. Let's do that. Okay, let's try this. All right, you got something for me? Try this one. Let's give this a try then. Using the combination you identified, Asia would aggressively throw the line out to sea, leaning forward and shouting into the ocean. Feeding time, you scaly things! Come on, who wants to challenge my reeling skills? Oh my God. After some then the time passes, the line would go taut and Aisha's eyes widen. 
I got one! She begins to grunt and struggle as she reels in the line. However, she falters, almost stumbling forward into the ocean. <laughs> this is being difficult! Hey, Rex, come give me a hand, will you? Right. He rushed to Aisha's side, bracing her and helping her turn the handle and the fishing rod to reel in the line. You're both met with a great deal of resistance, and the more you struggle with the reeling, the more a dark shadow would begin to appear underneath the water, bringing your catch closer and closer to the surface. Eventually, a crimson-scaled fish would emerge with a splash, flying through the air and onto the deck, flailing its tail and fins out the water aimlessly. This one looks pretty promising, huh? I think that's it. I mean, at least it looks like a crimson-scaled fish. It was a strong opponent. We managed to kick its butt in the end. Now we can... She pauses. What'd you need it for again? I was gonna make a meal for Ren. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's probably where I step out. Cooking isn't my thing. And Constance told me to stay out of the kitchen. Apparently there are too many things there that I could hurt myself with. Right. But Winry might be able to help you with looking for it for herself. She makes all our meals around here, so she'd best know how to get that thing turned into something more edible. Winry, huh? Oh, boy. Well, we got it. Let's see. Let's go this way. I'm just gonna make all the way down. Can you cook? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't want to answer now. It's tech. I can do anything, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. Right, right, guys. <laughs> All right, here we go. We got this. <laughs> oh, this is it. We got this. It's cooking time. I walk into the kitchen and find Wenry and Carrie both inside. Wenry is in her own corner of the room, skinning some potatoes with a small knife, while Carrie is closer to you, cleaning up a table with some stray scraps. Carrie notices you first, and her eyes light up a bit. Winry, however, would be the first to speak, her eyes remaining on the potato. Dinner will be ready when I say it's ready, Jalen, so stop coming in and asking. Uh, hello? Ah! She lets out a blood-curdling scream as she drops the potato onto the cutting board below and holds up a knife at you with both hands. That's a knife, okay! When did you get in here? She demands. Winry, please calm down, he just came in! Kara tries to step in to defend you. Yeah, I literally just got here! Then what exactly are you doing in here, huh? Her tone is hostile and accusatory. You're not trying to sabotage anything, are you? Or are you in or are you gonna cause some other kind of trouble? What? No! Can I just explain, please? Listen, I just need to make a ceviche. I know, weird word, but it's a real thing. You explain to Winry. I know what a ceviche is! That makes one of us, Carrie mutters to herself. I was hoping... You continue, that you would be willing to help me make it. I could use a chef's expertise on this one, because evidently by all my other attempts, I am screwed if I do it on my own. Winry lowers the knife, setting down on the cutting board and huffing to herself, avoiding eye contact with you. That's so oddly specific. Why are you trying to make a ceviche? I want to give it to Ren and poison it? What?! Why would I try to poison something that I'm actively asking you to help me make? You ask her. That doesn't make any sense! I don't know you. I don't know your motives for any of this. I literally just want to make Ren a ceviche. Why is everyone on this ship making it so much more complicated when it doesn't have to be? Alright, I think you both need to calm down. Carrie steps in quickly, standing between both of you with her hands up. Winry. What are you looking at me for? He's the one raiding the kitchen trying to poison our captain. This is actually so infuriating. I'm sure he's not trying to poison Ren. He just told you what his plans were. Why would someone with malicious intent tell someone their plans before they do it? Doesn't that make it easier to stop them from doing something bad? Don't bring your rationality into this, carry. I think it's sweet that he came to you to ask you for your help, Carrie asks. I know that you're still a little nervous about Rex, but he's really not that bad. 
Come on, Winry. Don't come on, Winry me. He's a stranger. And he fell out of the sky, which is an abnormal method of transportation! This is the only logical thing you've said this entire conversation. How come you're so calm about this, Kiri? You're so willing to blindly put your trust into a strange, silver-eyed, mystery guy! Kiri pauses. I mean, yeah, feel a falling out of the sky thing is really strange. At the same time, I know that he's not a bad guy at all, and that he's actually pretty nice. Well, how would you know that? He's always been kind to me, even when he didn't need to be. He was locked up in a jail cell, and he still managed to make me laugh and crack some jokes. I was a little, I was a little intimidated too at first, but then I just talked to him, and realized he's not nearly as scary as he looks. <laughs> oh. Plus, if he, if he was scary once upon a time, he's an amnesiac. He doesn't remember anything, like where he came from or where he lives. He didn't even know what a tread was. Isn't that kind of sad? But, uh, hey! Winry hesitates. Carrie continues. Come on, Winry. He's not a bad person at all. You don't have to be so cautious around him. Can't even, I can even stay right here the whole time if you're nervous about him helping you, and you still think he's up to something. Oh, Carrie, please. You stay silent, allowing Carrie to speak with Winry and appeal to her. She clasps her hands together and pleads to Winry. Winry stares at her for some time before just sighing. <sighs> You're gonna be the death of me, I swear. Fine, I'll help you make your ceviche or something. Rex, don't make me regret this, Carrie. Hooray! Well, thanks, both of you. Uh, we're gonna need a number of ingredients, but specifically we're gonna need some sort of fish fillet or a crustacean to be the star of the show. Probably have some cod stored away somewhere. Well, actually, I actually have the fish I want to use. You offer Winry the fish, and she looks at it in surprise, setting it down lengthwise on the kitchen table. Where did you even get a fish like this? Aisha helped me catch it. Why, Aisha? So everyone is just helping you with stuff now, huh? Is every is anyone like me on the ship and not helping you? Ren isn't. You're telling me I'm on the same side as Ren. Oh, gods, maybe I should reconsider my opinions. Carrie giggles to herself at Winry's statement before turning her attention back to the fish. Do you think you can prepare this, Winry? Uh, I'm not sure. I've never prepared anything like this before. Uh, we can still help you make something with it. <laughs> with something this fresh and high quality, I want to use spices and items just as good. Especially if we want to make the ceviche better than ever. Oh, Rex and I can help gather the other ingredients up for you while you while you with the with the fish. <laughs> while you work with the fish. That's such a funny line. I suppose that works. I should have some cookbooks around here so you can read through some recipes and figure out what will go well with this kind of fish. Sounds good. Let's look around. Okay, that's a lot of pots and pans. And Foods. Oh man, what goes in a ceviche? Okay, high quality, good stuff. Gotta combine it all. So how do you cook a ceviche? Do you bake it? Do you saute it? Do you fry it? Do you hydrate it? Thank you for the hydrate. We have one ingredient. We know it's going to be the snapper, which I... There you go. <laughs> no, it's going to be the snapper. So that's the fish handled. What should we put on it? What goes good on fish? I can cook ramen. Thank you very much. Hmm. Salt and pepper? Mm, that might be overbearing. Maybe just salt. Pepper is like a divisive thing, but salt goes great on everything. Flour. Do we need flour? I know you add flour to some stuff to give it body. But I'm not sure if we need the body. Hot sauce is definitely not the high quality stuff we're looking for. Oil? That might make it greasy. Definitely not sweet potato. Yeah, definitely not. Could never be sweet potato. Lettuce? I hate lettuce. Maybe Ren's the same. I'm not putting that in there. She said spices. Let's put in spice. Rice. Is there rice in a ceviche? I don't think so. I wouldn't know. Ellis didn't mention rice. 
Tomatoes. There's definitely got to be tomatoes, right? No? Maybe? Hmm. Onions. Onions go in everything, if you ask me. Gotta be onion. Hey, we said no to the sweet potato. Maybe a normal potato. Ooh, lemon juice. You cannot go wrong with lemon juice. Hmm. Chili pepper might be too spicy. Celery? Ugh. Let's see. Butter? We probably need butter. Yeah, I probably need butter. Maybe an egg? No. We already got the protein. Yeah, we don't need these. We've already got protein. How do you cook it? In a pot? Mortar and pestle? Definitely not. Bakeware? We're not baking a cake. We're definitely not juicing it. We're not mixing. Oh, well, maybe we are. Skillet? Maybe the skillet. Not the maybe the saucepan. Hmm. Spice leaf, onion, salt. Okay, hey, these ones I'm certain on. It has to be these ones. These ones gotta go. These ones I'm not so sure on. Lemon? No, lemons in there. Lemons in there. I'm actually less certain about a uh, onion. These three, it's gotta be. I can't imagine any form of seafood without these. Rex, look at the cookbooks. <gasps> Genius. As you flip through the cookbook, a number of seafood recipes catch your eye. You skip through the ingredients to determine the best picks for your ceviche dish. Let's see. Surf and turf. Ingredients. Fish. Meat of choosing. Onion. Sweet potato. Definitely not this one. Begin by preparing your meat. Season with salt and black pepper. Heat the pan. Uh, gumbo. Ingredients. Sausage, crab, shrimp, tomato, onion, spice leaf, hot sauce. I don't know if it's a gumbo. Crayfish salad. Oh, it's definitely not a salad. Crayfish, lettuce, tomato, spice leaf, cheese, oil. No. Clam chowder. Clam, potato, onion, salt, pepper, butter. It's not a chowder, is it? Fish dinner. Fish, lemon, flour, and egg batter. Oh, this is too boring. It, Ren said it was like, Ellis made it sound like it was this big deal. Crawfish etouffee. I don't think an etouffee is way too far off. I mean, maybe the salad. Salad seems pretty close. Lettuce, tomato. No, it doesn't seem that close. Maybe this one? Spice leaf, onion. No, this uses crab and shrimp and sausage. We know it wasn't that. It has one star. It has one star of the show. So it's going to be slightly off. we got to blend stuff. What's a common trend across these? Onion? I, okay, I'm more confident on the onion now. There's a lot of dishes that have onion in it. What about this? Onion. Not a whole lot with lemon, though. Lemon's in the fish dinner. Hmm. Maybe we need pepper? I think salt is mandatory. Less confident on the lemon. I think spice leaf. Yeah, definitely spice leaf. Is it close to surf and turf? Well, let's show what we've got. Hold on, we need something. We need a tool, right? That's in a pan. That's a pot. That's a pot. Mixing bowl, no. So we gotta cook it. But based on the ingredients, do we put these all in a pot? That's if we're gonna make like a soup or something. Ceviche doesn't sound like soup. Maybe we do bake it. Like a lasagna? Or many of the other things that you bake? Let's try pot. No, no, let's get the saucepan. It might be the saucepan. Or no, no, no. Wait. Saucepan or the skillet? Let's try the skillet. Dialogue not working. Ah, oh. the infamous. Oh wait, no wait, 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 wait. Dumb, dumb, dumb. I talked to her. Carrie glances up at you. Did you find some ingredients to use, Rex? Uh, how do these look? Hmm. Carrie looks over your ingredients. I'm not sure about some of these. Maybe we should keep looking. Remember, we want to find ingredients that will nicely complement the fish that you found, and they're commonly found in a ceviche. Oh right. Okay, fine. 
Hold on. Uh, onion spice leaf. Guarantee. We have the fish. Because she has the grouper. Or not the grouper. The chomper. Biter. Something. Salt. I'm putting back in lemon juice. I'm gonna guess not butter or potato. I just don't think it's anything from like a lot of some of these shelves. I don't think it's this one. We already got that. I want to try the bakeware. That do we need anything else? Honestly, could this just do it on its own? Are we missing something else? Ceviche. Wrong. Ceviche. No, my trade request for backstage expired. All right. Ceviche. Is it? Maybe it's similar to Surf and Turf. Is it? Can we, can we, sweet potato? We can trade normal potato, then sweet potato, or sweet potato, then normal potato. Which one do I find first? There's potato. Can try potato? Or sweet potato. Let's try potato first, and then we'll try sweet potato. Here, how's this? Did you find some ingredients used, Rex? Nah, that's not right. Okay, 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 okay. It's it, it, it's gotta be. It's gotta be. It's gotta be the sweet potato. Not there. Let's put the skillet back. Okay. All right, we got this. It's gotta be it. Carrie glances up at you. Did you find the ingredients to use, Rex? Try these. Hmm. Carrie looks over your ingredients. Yeah, these look good. These should work perfectly in the ceviche. Let's go and check on Winry and give everything to her so we can so she can finish cooking everything. Yes, I'm so good. We didn't even need pepper. I was right. I was right on the no pepper call. I was like, screw the pepper. It's the salt. We have the salt and the spice. We got enough. We didn't need the pepper. Yes. Do and Carrie both approach Winry, who would be standing before a filleted crisp crimson snapper. Snapper, that's what it is. The head has been sliced off, cle clean off the rest of the body, and the scales and fins have been cleaned off the meat. Winry wipes her brow, setting the knife aside carefully as she turns to you both. Well, did you find anything? I would think these could be worth a try. Winry looks over your ingredients with a hand over her chin. Mm. Yeah, these are okay, I guess. She huffs, turning away from you. I suppose you're not entirely useless in the kitchen. Hey, this is the first nice thing you've said to me. D don't get used to it. I still don't like you. So are we friends now or... No! Just because you weren't useless doesn't mean we're friends. She blushes in embarrassment. S stop distracting me. Now that you've gathered everything together, I can put it all together into one tasty ceviche fit for a king. Or, I suppose, in this case, fit for a captain. Do your thing. You and Carrie step aside and give Winry space. You watch with intense interest as she would slice through your ingredients, mincing at unbelievable speeds and grinding seasonings and leaves into one cohesive mixture. She takes small tastes of the individual pieces as she goes, tossing all of the vegetables into a mixing bowl with some of the oil and seasoning you selected. Lastly, she would take the fish and begin to carefully sear it over a small fire. She cuts the fish into bite-sized, flaky pieces adding it to the rest of the ingredients and finishing it all off with some more of the spice leaves and the juice of a lemon. In the end, she ends a moderately sized bowl of delicious looking ceviche. Well, that looks good. I agree. Fuck, wrong voice. <laughs> I agree, Carrie smiles. Looks so yummy, Winry. You've really outdone yourself this time. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You're the ones who got all the ingredients I needed. Wouldn't have been able to make it without your... <clears throat> she pauses, stopping herself and stubbornly huffing. Aw, oh, you've got a soft spot, Winry, don't you? Shut up and get out of my kitchen! She snaps, embarrassed. You got your ceviche, didn't you? Go feed to Ren and leave me alone! Carrie laughs a bit, giving you a nod. Good luck, Rex. I'm sure she'll love it. Thanks. Alright, here we go. You got our ceviche. Now... This is it. If this doesn't work, I don't know what will. 
the ceviche to end all ceviches. And I didn't directly make it this time. So you know what? It can't be bad. It was actually made by a proper chef. We gotta, we, it's gotta be this one. This one for all the marbles. This one for all the little tally marks. Okay, here we go. Those two are outside. Hello. As you approach Ren's office, you notice that Alice and Julia are waiting outside nearby. Julia sees you walking over with the bowl, and her expression lights up. Oh, is that the food? Is that it? Yeah, Ren's favorite food, ceviche. That doesn't even sound like a real word. <laughs> Why does everyone think that? Alice says out loud. <sighs> Thanks again for telling me, Alice. Yeah, yeah, she brushes you off. I suppose that doesn't look that bad. Maybe this will be your first win, hmm? How do you think? I'm feeling pretty good about it. As you should, Julia nods confidently. No one can say no to their favorite food. This is going to make Ren respect you for sure. And if she doesn't, I'll give her a piece of my mind. Now that is something I want to see. Let's do this. You got this, Rex. I believe in you. Eh, good luck or something. I don't know. I don't have a horse in this race. <laughs> okay. Let's go. It's gotta be this one. After a long day, you find yourself within Ren's office for a third time. She would sit behind her desk, looking over a couple of papers and writing some illegible sentences in cursive with her quill. You gulp, slowly walking forward with the bolt wool in hand. Your boots tap against the sleek, newly cleaned wooden planks. You stop yourself directly in front of her desk, remaining quiet for what feels like an eternity, as Ren would finish her, sen her sentence, dotting down a concluding period before looking up at you and sighing, unamused. Okay, this is the third time today, Rex. Leave me alone. Well, okay, hang on. First, it was some love letter. Then it was the most hideous painting I've ever seen. And now what, hmm? Your favorite meal? Curiously, she wouldn't immediately say anything against you. You slowly lower the bowl, allowing her to see the ceviche for herself. She raises an eyebrow. Huh. It's ceviche. I helped make it for you. You definitely did your research. She stares at the bowl before narrowing her eyes. What'd you put in it? Nothing. It's just a normal ceviche. Right. She crosses her arms, leaning back in her chair, unimpressed. Isn't it good? Why aren't you impressed? You think I don't know what's going on here? She kicks one leg over the other casually, she explains. I'm not some second-rate pirate. I'm the real deal, and I know a bribe when I see one. I know what you're doing, Rex. Maybe you wanted to try and gain my approval or something, but at the end of the day, it's all just for your own personal gain. It's an empty gesture. <laughs> so I did all this for nothing? I don't see why you're getting so worked up. How are you not getting this? She stands up, looking you in the eyes and jabbing a finger into your chest. I don't care about you. I own you. I'm going to sell you. I literally couldn't care less about you or whatever it is you're trying to do here. You're an object, a stepping stone to wealth and riches for me and my crew. <laughs> so stop trying so hard. It's embarrassing. She sits down again. <laughs> Embarrassing? You glare at her in anger, your fist practically shaking. <laughs> my bad for trying to make things different, then. My bad for trying to show you that I'm a person or something. Is it really so much to ask that you show me a modicum of the respect I've tried to show you and your crew? Or are you really so cold that all my efforts are meaningless to you? Ren is silent, watching your outburst in slight surprise. Gulp, looking away and starting to turn. The atmosphere of the office beginning to make you sick. Fine, then. Whatever. I'm sorry for trying. Enjoy your meal. You start to leave her office entirely. However, her voice would sound behind you. Gods! 
Stop, Rex. You glance back at her coldly. She sighs. Look, you made too much. There's way too much here for one person to eat alone. So why don't you stick around and help me finish it? Since you're the one presenting the issue to me. <sighs> Fine. Whatever. You walk over to one of the chairs that are pushed neatly in a table nearby, pulling it across the floor and placing it in front of Ren's desk. She opens a drawer under her desk and offers you a spoon. I have plenty extra in here, given how often I eat in this office by myself. Hmm. The next several moments would be awkward and silent, the only sounds being the crashing waves outside the windows and the clinking of your spoons on the inside of the bowl. The ceviche itself is delicious, the environment being the only thing souring its taste. The fish melts in your mouth, and the lemon juice brightens up the entire dish nicely. And keep your eyes on the desk as you eat, however, not giving yourself the chance to look up at Ren to see if she's enjoying the dish herself. The quiet pattering of rain would start to get louder and louder, as very slowly it would grow darker as clouds would block out the sun and rain would begin to fall on the ship at sea. <laughs> Way to set the mood. Ren would speak up. Ha! <laughs> but I'll hand it to you. This is just as good as the day I first had it. Yeah, well, I didn't make it. Winry did. Winry did. There's a pause. Huh. Can't say I saw that one coming. You know, when I first met Winry, she was a recluse. She didn't talk to anyone, and she stayed in the back of the kitchen alone for hours at a time. Whenever someone tried to talk to her, she went out the back door. <laughs> and yet, you managed to convince her to help you make an entire ceviche with you after being here for, what, a, a, a day? Wait, so she's like that with everyone? She doesn't just hate me? Nah, don't take it too personally. She's just... antisocial, I guess. Oh, hey, me too. <laughs> right, yeah. You sure seem like it. Ren chuckles, leaning forward and resting her head, her head in her hand, looking up at you. You manage to give her a single glance, setting your spoon down. So, if you persuaded Winry to lend a hand, then I guess the entire crew helped you with this dish, huh? <laughs> uh, not really. Yeah, that's what I thought. But I helped them with other things. What? She pauses, looking up at you seriously and with genuine interest. You consider her expression for a moment before inhaling and exhaling. Well, it all started with me and Julia. She and I made a plan to try and gain your respect. From there, I sort of talked to everyone, you start to explain to Ren. For several minutes, you begin to describe your day to Ren, your activities with all the members of her crew, and the favors you completed, and the things that others did to help you. Ren would listen to you carefully, giving you small nods here and there, but overall her expression would remain indifferent. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Huh. Ren takes a moment to consider your words before clearing your throat. So, Julia helped make helped you make this scheme. You were able to ingratiate yourself with Julia and even all the others that helped you with this whole operation. Pretty much. Alice even helped you? Seriously? Yeah, that one surprised me too. She pauses as you look down at the ground, rubbing the back of your neck. But, I guess, in the end, most of it didn't even matter. You didn't care about the painting or the meal. She didn't even read the letter. What'd it say? She asks you. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter anymore. Say it, or I'm hanging you by your foot from the top of the crow's nest. Her threat shocks you so much that you almost cough up this ceviche you just ate. <coughs> okay, 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 okay. You sigh. I just... I said it was pretty cool that... God, how do we even say this? That someone who tries to impress people or tries too hard to make yourself look really imposing, you don't really have to do any of that. You already got a lot going on or something like that. Ren is quiet. You're right, that's pretty cringy. Yeah, I know. Nonetheless, the atmosphere would begin to brighten as you both laugh at your own cheesy words. For the next minute, for the next few minutes, the both of you return to eating your meals, 
Occasionally, you glance at each other. You're not exactly sure what else to say to her. Ren, on the other hand, looks contemplative. Eventually, she opens her mouth to speak. I can't seem to find the right words. She struggles a couple of times, before eventually, she figures out what she wants to say. Rex, I think that I could, however, before she could finish her statement, the entire ship would lurch, causing you to jolt in your seats. Ren pauses, looking around in confusion as the ship starts to level out again. What the heck? Another lurch, this time much stronger. Items would fall off of Ren's desk, desk and knickknacks would slide from their shelves. Ren would stand up from her chair while you would find it difficult to keep your balance. Whoa! whoa, whoa. Get up. Thanks. Jalen, what in the name of unity is going on? I don't know. I think something big just rammed into the ship. What does that mean? Like, like a shark or... What the hell? That's a... Kraken! You look around in the chaos of the ship for something, anything that could be of use. Everyone is shouting all around you as the last of the ocean creatures is defeated. We have to get out of here! It has a ship pin, we can't shake it off! Any more big attacks and the ship will get torn in half! Oh crap, oh crap, what do we do? Rex! Suddenly you notice Carrie rushing over to you, trying to keep her balance as the entire ship lurches and sways in a storm. In her arms would be a large and heavy looking cannonball. You okay? I don't know, Carrie! We're being attacked by a massive squid! Am I supposed to be okay? I was talking about physically more than- more physically than mentally, but fair enough! Carrie flinches at some of the thunder, almost dropping the cannonball. And now's not the time to freeze up! We all have to get that thing off the ship and get out of here! Okay, well how do we do that? Take this cannonball! Once you have five, give them all to Aisha, okay? She'll load them into the cannon so we can blast that thing off the ship! I'm gonna start running to grab more, and then I'll roll them to you when I can! Careful not to miss them or they'll just roll off the ship with all this lurching! Okay, 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 okay! Look for cannonballs, revive your Aisha! Got it! Uh, okay. It's a big, big squid! Big tentacles! Okay! What am I supposed to do here? I have nothing! I have nothing about you! Okay, okay. That's a creature. It's looking at me. It's another sea creature. Um, um... <laughs> Ah! Oh, oh, I killed it. Okay. Okay. Okay! Okay, okay, okay! I see. I see what's going on. Alright, alright. Cool. Okay. Okay. We just- okay. It's easy. It's easy. We just gotta- we gotta kill this giant thing, and then we'll be fine. We have to get it off the ship. We can't get it down without the- Okay, got it! We can't get it down without its head up! There's no point in collecting cannonballs until then! We gotta wait for these tendrils to go down. Uh, how do I do that, though? Come on. Uh, I hear lightning. Thunder striking. Come on! Whoa! Jeez! They keep slapping down. I better not be in the way when they do that. Uh, I guess we just keep fighting until we get an opportunity. Maybe we can do some damage to this thing. We actually have a weapon. Of course, I can't reach the tendrils like that. Okay. Still more creatures. Jeez, how many are down there? Now how the heck am I supposed to hit those? They don't stay down. Ow! Hmm. It keeps slapping down. Maybe a counterattack, I guess? I don't really have any other ideas. They don't stay down long enough. Hey, there we go! Let's get stabbing! Come on! Ah! Ah! 
There you go, how'd you like that? Oh, I hate Krakens. Oh, I hate seafood. Oh, I hate, I hate giant squids. That's lightning. It's on the deck of the ship. Oh, okay, gotta stop this one. Come on. I'm on, get off, get off. I need to react quickly, otherwise that thing might drag us down into the ocean. Okay, 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 okay. Definitely taking damage. If I just do it enough, hopefully they'll go down. Maybe we can force the guy to re-emerge again. Immediately after emerging, he went underwater. He's trying to pull us down. <sighs> okay. Okay, okay! Here we go! Oh, the six of the way! Come out of my way! Okay! <sighs> there! I can't feel good in the suckers. Hey, that one got struck by lightning. I guess that's an advantage, huh? Oh, th did it bring the storm with it? That's insane! Okay, here we go. All right. What, I've like hit each one once? Twice? I've hit each one twice. Surely they gotta start be getting close. That one just went down! Okay, maybe we're onto something here. The other one go down too? Oh, we really walloped that guy, I guess. Okay. Just gotta deal with- God! Dang it! More lightning. Oh boy. Oh, there it is! Okay, now I need those cannonballs. Crap! Oh, where's Carrie? Okay. Rex cannonball incoming! Okay, got it! From where? Where's the cannonball? Oh, I don't see it! Oh, dang it. Oh, giant kraken. Oh, hey, there was one. All right, there we go. Let's just keep that up then. That's one cannonball down. We just need four more. Gotta keep chopping up these weird flying fish. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, okay. How many do we need for the cannons? Five? Yeah, five cannons. A cannonball incoming? Okay, okay. Got it. Where is it? I gotta wait for it. Let's get over there. There it is. Okay, that's two. Come on. Come on, we just need a few more. Once we get three more, should be solid. <laughs> Keep it up, Rex. I'm sending more your way. Thanks, Gary. Oh, hey, there. Uh, you should just beat the crap out of one. There it is. There we go. Okay. Oh, dang it. So many fish. I'll never look at the ocean the same way again! Come on, come on. Is that another one? That was another one! We need one more! Come on. Ow, ow! Oh, I got smacked! Oh, the Kraken. Get up, Rex. I'm sending more your way. All right.
Here we go. That's five. Z, get these to Aisha now. Come on. Aisha, I got five. You rush over to Aisha, who gives you a quick glance up from her work. Rex, you got anything for me? Look, here. Perfect. Now I can ready up the cannons and blast that thing out of the water. Whatever she pauses. Oh, shoot, I didn't think about the rain. That's a problem. Wait, what is this? What? In order to fire off the cannons, I need a fire to light the fuse. I can't just strike a match in this weather. I need some other way to light him up. Jay suddenly gets an idea, however. Rex, go run over and get Ellis. Then bring her over here. I need her firepower to light the cannon fuses. Roger that. Who's Roger? Just get Ellis before the boat splits in half. It's a freeze. Oh, whatever. Okay, 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 okay. Where's Ellis? There she is. You approach Alice, who punches one of the ocean creatures off the ship and down into the angry seawater below. And stay off! Alice, I need your help. She glances back at you. You don't say! The entire ship needs help right now, Rex! Aisha needs you to help light the fuses on the cannons! <sighs> she curses under her breath. Look, I can't exactly help with that right now. Not when I have all these enemies to deal with. Someone needs to take them out and protect everyone else! As she says this, more enemies would appear to block your path. No gods! Whoa! Okay, 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 okay. I hate fish. I hate them. I just hate fish. Come on. No way. We just need to wipe them out, and then we'll be solid. Ooh. Nice, that is a straight-up torch right there. Oh. Come on. Is that the last of them? I think that was it. All right, that's the last of them. Let's get over to Aisha before more show her up. All right, good idea. Come on. Come on. You and Ellis run back over to Aisha, who would look at Ellis expectantly. Took you long enough! Now can we light up this big tentacle monster already? Can I have my own problems to deal with, Aisha? But whatever. Let's just get that thing out of here. Okay. Ellis kneels down, running by each and every one of the cannons with an extended flaming arm, lighting the fuses. You watch the fire burn down the ropes one by one until... Fire in the hole! Ah! Whoa! Okay. That knocked him back down. Oh, he's not done yet. Okay, 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 okay. Awesome, cool, sweet! Okay. Where's he gonna reemerge now? Or is he gonna throw up tendrils again like last time? Ooh, tendrils again like last time. Great! Awesome. I'm getting down from. Oh, the. Uh, uh, oh, God! Come on. The other thing couldn't have been too pleased from that. Oh, he's definitely angry. There's more of these things. Is that lightning? Yeah, that's more lightning. Oh, God. Okay, okay, okay. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Let's gotta keep going. Gotta hopefully not get struck by lightning. I'm just gonna keep stabbing weird fish creatures. This is no big deal. You know, this is how I spend most of my weekends. You know, just fighting giant sea monsters and, and creatures and oh god, oh god. Okay. What the heck is that? What does that mean? Okay, okay, okay. That's what that means. Awesome! Yay! Whoa, no! Okay, that's fine. Just a wave or two, no big deal. More lightning striking. Uh. 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 What was that? Man, hold on, do I got movement? 
I got moves! Yo! I've got moves! Holy! Nice! Come on! Okay, that's a tension slimming done. I need to stop it. Come on. Get chopped up. Come on. Go home. Where do you even live? We don't want you here. Dang it. More eyes. These weird fist things! It'll be too soon before I see these things again. Okay. Just gotta be careful, you know. Just four giant tendrils that are the size of the ship! No big deal! Oh, you got struck by lightning! <laughs> Moron! Come on! Gotcha! Okay, we're doing okay. Come on! Come on! There! Come on! Nice! This sword's awesome! What is this, a saber? Huh. Okay. So how many of these creatures are there? I feel like I'm wiping out a small undersea population. I don't feel too bad about it, though. No, oh, whoa! That thing almost crushed me! Oh, I'm not gonna stab it. Oh, that was close. If they would have thrown me off the ship, that would have been a death sentence. Come on. Oh, this is crazy. This is crazy! Okay. Ooh. Cleared a lot of those eyes. Are the tendrils going back down? They are! That means the thing's probably gonna reemerge, right? Wonder where I was there last time. <sighs> Storm is so strong. Oh, there it is. Okay, no, that's fine. That's no big deal. Really, not one at all. Oh, carry cannonballs. Rex cannonball incoming. I got it. Oh, nice. There's one. Okay. I just gotta keep cutting it down. The bigger they are, the harder they sink into the bottom of the ocean, hopefully. <sighs> it's not doing anything. That's okay. I'm just kind of standing there for a second. Ooh, I don't see anything to fight. I don't see any tendrils. Are we okay? Just need a few more cannonballs. Oh, crap. Okay. Gonna keep stabbing. Come on. Come on. Ugh. What the hell is that? What the? Oh, wait, Bob and we hit Bob and we. <laughs> Keep it up, Rex. I'm sending more your way. Thanks, Carrie! Right there. Nice. That's two. Okay, 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 okay. Eye laser. Oh, it's every time! Oh! Okay, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. 
Cannibal incoming! Where is it at? I just gotta look for it. There! Got it! That's three! Oh god! Whoa! Ow! 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 Okay! Okay, that's fine. It's okay, we just got, you know, casually almost crushed by an entire Kraken tentacle. Get up, Rex, I'm sending more your way! I'm waiting, carry! There it is! I need one more! One more to arm the cannons! Alright, there we go. Come on! Next cannonball incoming! Right! There! That's the fifth one! Come on! Come on! Yes! Aisha! Alright then! So have to destroy that guy on the other side of the ship this time! You got anything for me, Rex? Here! Awesome! You know the drill then! I'll get the cannons ready! You go get Ellis! Got it! Where's Ellis? Uh, is she back up here? Here we go! Ellis! Time to light some more fuses, huh? Just help me clear out these monsters like last time before I head over there! Right! Come on! There she is! Oh crap, there's a lot! Oh, that was kinda cool! Come on! Ah, uh, it's, it's a whole new meaning to flying fish! Look at that torch! Alright. Uh, got it. Uh, oh, okay! Oh, I was close. Okay, come on! Just like before, you and Ellis rush over to Aisha, and Ellis lights each of the fuses on the cannons. Heads up! Oh, this isn't getting any easier! Oh, nice! Nice, nice, nice! We hit him, we shot him so many times, he's eaten like 10 cannonballs! How many more can he take? Okay, so they were good? Oh, that's more tendrils! Okay. Okay, no, that's- <laughs> that's fine. Oh, that's so fine! That's beyond fine! I can't think of anything finer than that! Okay. What? And it's these things. Great! Cool! Okay! Dude, they throw so hard! Don't- they're gonna throw me overboard! Oh no! Woohoo! Oh, it was so close! Good thing I got movement! Oh, come on! Lightning struck that one! That was pretty cool! Ugh! Come on. That's six! Come on, come on, come on! Come on! Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, let's gotta be careful. I feel like I'm playing like roulette. Oh, okay. Except with my life and tentacles. Never thought I'd say that. That's another one. Come on. Nice. There's more of these. What those flying guys are gone now. These guys are significantly more dangerous though. Whoa! Come on! What? Ah! Okay! Okay, okay, okay! I can win this! I can win this! I think I just got struck by lightning! Ow! There! What? Ah! Okay, 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 okay! So many! So close! So close! It's another! It's over there! What? Ah! Okay. It has to be close. It has to be. Gotta get over there! 
What the? Get off! You're not bringing the ship down! Wait. Okay. They're starting to go back down. Okay. That means it's gonna reemerge. Wonder where. Come on, it's gotta be weakened, right? Ow, I just got struck again. Okay. Where is it? Whoa, okay, there it is. Rex Cannibal incoming. Okay, back to this. Come on, surely it's gotta be close now. There. Let's grab that. Nice. Come on. More enemies. Hmm. Okay, 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 okay. You made your points, you made your points, you made your points. Ooh. Rex, keep it up, I'm sending more your way. Thanks, Carrie. Nice. Yoink. A cannonball actually like collateral damage there. That was a strike, a nice on Carrie. You're like bowling, but with sea creatures. Okay, that's two. Come on. What the- oh, oh! Oh! What the heck? What was that? Oh, that was horrible! Oh, that was terrible! Oh, my- feels so sluggish! What was that? Ugh. Keep it up, Rex! I'm sending more your way! Thanks! Ah, it feels like my head's pounding! What'd it just do to me? Alright, this thing needs to go down now! Come on! That's three. More lightning striking. Keep it up, Rex! I'm sending more your way! Thanks! Alright, I saw that cannonball. We need to grab it before it rolls off! There we go! It's gotta be close. I got one more cannonball away before another launch is ready. Rex, cannibal incoming! This is it! What's over there? Okay, that's five. Gotta get these to Aisha. Aisha! Alright, then we'll just have to destroy that guy on the other side of the ship this time. Got anything for me, Rex? Here. Awesome, you know the drill then. Get the cannons ready, you go get Alice. Okay. Wait, Alice, where is she? There she is! Come on! This thing's gotta be at its limit! Help me finish off this wave, then we can finish off that oversized sushi! Alright, let's go! Okay. Huh. Oh, come on! On. You can do this. All right. Is that all of them? It looks like all of them. I think it's clear, right? What the? What the hell is that? Oh, it's big. Oh, it's really big. Okay, okay, no, that's fine. We can do this. What the? Yes! Yes! Come on! Let's go! This is it. One for all the marbles. 
We can do this! Cannons ready! Fire! Hey, we got him! My ship! We can't shoot the thing when it's down there. What are you doing, you idiot? Rex, get back here! I swear if you damage the merchandise! I don't know what's different here. I swear, I'm not the sort of guy that can do these kinds of things. But doing it just feels... so right. You're finished! I couldn't tell you what changed. This dream is unlike anything I've ever done before. For the first time, I felt like a hero. Traveler, your journey isn't over yet. Wake up. Traveler. I'm, I'm still alive? Oh my god. Oh, holy crap. I'm not a pancake. What? Huh? That... I don't... Okay, now am I dreaming? What's going on? Huh. I'm good. I'm intact. Oh, crap. Is Julie okay? She's gotta be, right? Nothing's down here. Ship isn't underwater. Come on. Where's everyone? Oh, there they are. You rush back up to the deck where the entire crew is gathered at the other end of the ship to comfort to comfort a rather confused Julia, who looks at them all perplexed. No, I'm not moving until you tell me where Rex went! Why are you all looking at me like that? Rose speaks gently. J Julia. You need to understand that the Kraken was really strong. No, Rex is really strong! I know he's okay! Why won't you just believe me? The rest of the crew is rather quiet. Seems they haven't noticed you yet. You pant a bit, double-checking that you're unharmed before walking over to everyone. <sighs> hey! Hey guys! Guys, I'm right here! I'm good! Every one of them looks in your direction in utter shock. Some of them even in horror. However, Julia herself would beam and start to walk over to you. See? I told you guys he was okay! No one would really know what to say, but you notice that Winry would quickly take Julia by the arm and hold her back from greeting you. Guys? Julia looks at everyone in confusion as they stare at you skeptically and suspiciously. Why are we all just looking at him? I don't get it. Isn't this a good thing? I, I'm, I'm right here. I, I'm fine. What's with all the staring? Gwen would be the first one to walk forward, clearing her throat. <clears throat> Winry, can you take Julia downstairs? Jalen, work at moving us out of this region of the sea, just in case that thing comes back. Rest of you... Look over the damages. That clear? 
Yes, Captain! They all answer in unison. Meanwhile, Ren narrows her eyes at you. Could you come with me into my office, Rex? Huh? I mean, yeah, I guess I could. Ren would walk past you, and you sense an unsettling air about her. Ellis pauses before walking after her, followed by Rose. Carrie walks up to you and gives you a confused but thankful expression, nodding at you. You look over the rest of the crew, who would quickly vacate the area to perform their own tasks. And Julia stares at you all as you go, still overly befuddled. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, hey. You walk behind Ren, Ellis, Rose, and Carrie through the doors to Ren's office. You glance back towards the deck as you enter, still feeling rather conflicted. The atmosphere is tense, and for the first time, the ship of the sirens would be eerily quiet. So, what are we talking about? Oh my god! You quickly put your hands up and surrender as you look back towards Ren, only to find a revolver trained on your head, the barrel pointed right between your eyes. Her expression would be one of anger and horror, but also mild betrayal. Ellis and Rose both look at her in surprise, when Carrie would put a hand over her mouth in shock. I'm gonna ask this just once. Who are you, really? What, what, what are you talking about? You know me. Apparently not! I was willing to look past the falling out of the sky part, because that was harmless enough. But normal people don't come back to life after being crushed by a 3,000 ton tentacle! How the hell are you standing in front of me right now? I, I, I don't know. Don't you dare lie to me. What are you, huh? I swear if you're some kind of void creature, I will kill you where you stand. Do you even think about harming this crew? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just as confused as you are. Ren, I think you need to take a breather. Ellis interjects. I don't need anything besides answers, Ellis. None of you are seriously about to stand by him and say that whatever he did back there was normal. He should be paced, but here he is. He doesn't even have a scratch on him. But that doesn't mean you're actually going to shoot him, Rose tries to reason. Ren doesn't say anything, just glares at you. Ren, I don't know what happened. I, I just woke back up. That that's it. No one moves an inch for a full minute. Ren's gun and gaze never leaving your face. I'm not taking any chances. She pulls down the hammer of the gun. She's actually going to kill you. Ah! You squeeze your eyes shut, preparing for a loud bang to resonate through your ears. But instead, you feel a pressure around your arm, and you hear a number of footsteps running forward. You open your eyes to see Carrie hugging your arm, standing in front of you with sweat dripping down her brow, staring back at Ren in slight fear. Alice and Rose have moved, and Ren has taken a step back. C Carrie? Carrie, get out of the way! Ren demands. No, I'm not going to let you hurt Rex! He's not like that! How would you know? You've only known him for a day! You can't be certain that he's not something evil trying to destroy this ship! I don't care! Don't you see how unfair you're being? Unfair! I'm protecting my crew and my ship! You're not even taking the time to consider how Rex is feeling right now. He doesn't even know what's going on. He's confused and you're scaring him. Carrie. Carrie has a point, Rose steps in. Rose, not you too! Ren protests. Think about it for a second, Ren, she continues. He looks just as confused as we are, if not more so. He's probably disoriented. We don't know what's going on here, but neither does he. Yeah, I, I really don't. And what if he's faking it? He could be tricking us! We don't even know if he's actually a dread named Rex! Do you know any dreads that can resurrect themselves from death? Even if he's not a normal dread, he just helped us defeat a Kraken. Alice points out. Why would he put his life on the line like that if he wanted to destroy the crew or the ship? Doesn't make any sense. He could have taken advantage of the chaos, but he didn't. I don't know if it's all an act or not, but if it is, he still stuck his neck out for us and saved Julia's life. He didn't have to do any of that, but he did. Ren stares at you for some time in silence, her glare faltering slightly. Carrie looks back up at her. 
let's just talk about this, okay, Ren? We're all in agreement here. I know you want to protect us, but Rex isn't the enemy. I, I swear, Ren, I don't know what happened. There's silence once more before eventually. Ren would slowly lower her arm, her eyes never leaving your face as she drops her gun to her side. <sighs> I need a drink, is all she would say as she leaves the office together, all together. Ellis, Rose, and Carrie watch her go. Oh my god. I should go after her to make sure everything isn't awful, Rose says, quickly jogging out of the cabin to catch up with Ren, leaving you with Ellis and Aunt Carrie. Ellis just crosses her arms, looking away from you indifferently while Carrie gives a sigh of relief. Thanks, Carrie, for having my back. It's no problem, really. I know that you're not an evil creature like Ren said. Emotions are just running a little high. Can you let go of my arm now? You see Carrie's face turn bright red when she realizes that she's been hu tightly hugging your arm this entire time. Oh, right! Sorry! <laughs> She awkwardly lets go, stepping away from you with a sheepish smile on her face. Alice would clear her throat, stepping in. Carrie, go outside for now and help everyone else, okay? Yeah, okay. Carrie waves goodbye to you as she leaves the cabin as well. You watch her go before turning your attention back to Alice, who just looks you up and down silently. Alice, why did you defend me back there? Was it that surprising that you have to ask? Oh, I kind of thought you hated me. Don't get the wrong idea. You're still an annoying moron. But think of it this way. I just spent a whole day watching you bend over backward for people who you don't really care about. <laughs> it's obvious you're not some evil monster. Stupid, maybe, but not evil. Thanks. What? Hey! She snorts a bit, her own statement cracking her up. <laughs> Either way... I just did what I thought was the right thing to do. But now, you owe me one. You got that, Rex? Ha ha, very funny. But thanks. Really. She pauses, blinking at you. It's whatever. Really. Okay, I don't know what I would have done without your help. Okay, I'm just going to cut you off right there. She interjects, walking past you quickly. Just don't worry about it. Seriously. Now then, are you just going to stand around in here like an idiot? Or are you, gonna come, are you coming with me? We have a whole ship to repair and could always use the extra pair of hands. She grins at you. <laughs> Unless you just want to throw in the towel instead. Yeah, in your dreams. That was kind of cool. Maybe there's a reason why I'm in this world. I mean, it's not like I was doing much in real life. But now that I'm here, I can do anything I want. And I'll always be okay. This is awesome! I guess this is the start of a new adventure. And I think I'm ready. Just make it